to episode five of the Grumpy Gaming Weekend podcast. Today, we are joined by Twisty Shape. How's it going? How's it going, indeed? And I am the Grumpy Brit. I am your host. And we are also joined by Blindside and Autarkic, as usual, my co-hosts. How are we doing, everyone? Good. Yeah, good. We awesome. all good? We all good? I'm ill, so it's not going good for me, but you'll just have to deal with it. So if I do go in a, in a cough of fitting, a f- cough of fitting, good start. Good start to the podcast. If I go in a fit of coughing Drunk halfway stuff. through, just don't worry about it. It's just me. Okay, I'm not dying. Uh, but we've got lots of topics today. So we're going to talk about um, a few different things. We want to talk about some news. In fact, it's mainly news this week. We're talking about some Dead by Daylight messes up. We're going to talk about some gaming industry stuff with the loot boxes. We're also going to talk about the state of play. We've got lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, so why don't we jump straight into what we've all been doing this week. So Elliot, what have you been up to this week? What have you been playing, dude? I finally finished Bloodborne. I finally i don't have to keep coming to the podcast being like so i'm still playing Bloodborne. <laughs> finally um and as of next week i'm starting sekiro so we can just have every which is basically asian up. asian bloodborne yeah it's, it's samurai bloodborne yeah um, so yeah i'm gonna be playing sekiro for next week i streamed this afternoon so I've, i'm starting a new thing on my twitch channel i'm calling finish it friday and i'm gonna go through all of my back catalog of games and i'm going to finish off um, anything that I have had in my library forever and have never got to playing or have never finished. Because there's a lot, so many games that I like got halfway through and then I never touched them again. So today I've been playing Doom, which I can see Twisty's got a little Doom guy up there as well. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit, so far I'm a big fan. I played the old games uh, a little bit. But uh, insofar it's just horrendously violent, good old-fashioned fun. You go around, you punch demons, rip their arms off, beat them to death with them. Right. We need we need a little it bit is, more of that. It's tasty. Exactly. This, we need a little bit more of that in in games, just fun. Um, I would like <laughs> to just quickly point out though, um, Elliot, that you are you are forgetting that today is technically Saturday. If uh, people are watching it on upload day, because we don't, we record this on a Friday and oh, it gets uploaded on a Saturday. I so we don't do this. I caused it. You caused it. You said it was Friday today, and it's definitely not Friday. If you're watching this on a Friday, you're you're watching it late. Um, yeah, if you're watching it on a Friday, I've probably just finished streaming my second episode <laughs> of Doom. So. But no, one week, one week, we're going to get through a podcast without without somebody's mind being blown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. It, man. <laughs> so, Taylor, what have you been playing this week? What have you been up to? You've been uh, a little bit AWOL, haven't you? You've not been on Twitch yeah, as much. Yeah, I uh, have rekindled my love for board games, so I've spent a lot of time doing that in the last week. I... Um, also have played a few like couch ps4 games unravel it's a co-op game where you're doing puzzles um i also started amnesia the first one which i'm blanking on the name because i got the collection with the The ps4 dark descent or yeah yeah i think yeah 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 Yeah. 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 so i started that i literally like was playing in my bedroom with the lights off sitting in bed like my heart was just pounding and i was like (laughs) i i was messaging you i'm like does stuff pop out because like I can't deal with this? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not that bad. It's not horrendously jump scary. It's more of a psychological one I found. Yeah, I was noticing that like as I continue playing. Like if you Thanks. Appreciate appreciate that. <laughs> if you um like stay in the dark too long, like even when you're walking, like the whole screen goes completely blurry. Like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the that's sanity. Though. Yeah, it's a sanity. Yeah, You've got to stay like, in the in I the light. That. It was fun. So like I'm really I'm really uh picky when it comes to sanity meters in horror games. I really don't like ones that where you go insane if you're standing in the dark and then they give you a limited amount of of light. And I know that um I know that amnesia yeah. does that. It annoys me though because there's parts where I felt like I had to rush my, myself through the the horror because I was running out of candles or running out of, of light sources. Um but that's just my own little personal well, I, I, get you on that. I always feel it's really weird where it's like, wait, because it's dark, I'm going wibbly wobbly. There are some yeah. games that do it better where they make it so like noises start happening and stuff. But when their eyes start going like wobbly, it's like, well, that's not what happens when it's dark. Yeah, I feel like it's supposed to be like a, you know, it's supposed to be scared of the dark kind of thing. But it kind of does the opposite for me. It kind of just makes me go like, OK, well, I'm just not going in any dark places then. I'll yeah. just stick to all of the light places. <laughs> um but twisty what have you been playing we haven't introduced you yet i did this last week as well where i'm like hey guys we have a guest and here they are what they've been playing <laughs> but i don't actually introduce them so why don't you tell people who you are and then we can get into what you've been playing this week yeah so my name is twisty shape um or nate for people who like me um i generally play a variety of games uh, or a variety of games on twitch uh but i also get heavily involved in um 
games industry news, etc., all over Twitter and Instagram as well. I, I love the games industry and the film industry and everything like that. So I like to get uh, handsy with all of the information that comes out with it. Perfect. And at the moment, I've been playing loads of Days Gone, the game that has had so many mixed reviews, yet I can't get enough of, which is yeah. weird. Yeah, I'm um, really enjoying Days Gone. I, I've actually I not it. been playing it for a few days, but yeah, I really enjoyed when I was playing it. So I, I've been saying that it reminds me a lot of the, like, the latest Assassin's Creed games, where you kind of just given this big open world, and it's like, right, go and do busy work. Yeah. But without this um, pseudo-leveling system that Assassin's Creed has, so I'm really into that. The fact that stealth works better in a zombie game than in mm. an Assassin's Creed game is yeah. weird. But yeah, it's great. Loving it. Yeah, I am. Um, I, so I played it um, probably about 15 to 20 hours. I've not anywhere near completed it. And a lot of that was me. I really enjoy just riding around and just like exploring and finding yeah, places. Usually. And uh, in that game, you can't just ride forever. You you have a motorbike and if you run out of fuel, your bike just stops. And so you have to continuously keep like searching, you know, buildings and things for, for, uh, for loot and for fuel. And I really like that because in that game, the enemies are quite challenging, especially if you come across, you know, a horde of, a horde of, uh, of zombies or, or a particularly large group of enemies and so it made this like real risk reward thing where it's like well i really need fuel but i see a lot of zombies in that compound and if i get cornered i don't have a bike to get away with so i really liked i really liked um a yeah lot of i've those had a aspects. couple of times where i like get into a gunfight and then you're just here like just such messed up sounds from the distance as because that's what the greatest thing about it is the sound design is out of this world and then mm. just this wave of zombies comes at you and it's like well i'm i'm gonna run to my bike but by the time i get there because they're just slightly faster than you it's like nah i'm dog food I'm dead yeah <laughs> yeah they are really like the enemies in that there's three different types of enemies as well uh, marauders i think they're called there's rippers and then there's the the zombies so there's the drifters the drifters rippers, and, yeah drifters. and the freaks is what they call the zombies i think yeah but, yeah uh, the zombies also have uh, or the freaks also have archetypes as well mm -hmm. so you got the little so got, ones like, the little nukes um you got the newts, which are like little children zombies, which is really weird. I didn't think they put children zombies in there because it's quite the first one you meet comes out of a car uh, boot or trunk, and you it's quite this brutal way the way that you sort of like behead it, and it's like, well, I just beheaded the child. Yeah, and it's fine with that. Um, <laughs> then you get like uh, I met a bleaker, which is like the big Hulk sized ones. Yeah, and it was eating the other zombie, which I thought was quite a cool like. Yeah, I said that because usually zombies don't eat other zombies in in fiction, and I yeah. noticed that 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 they are they definitely require food in Days yeah. Gone, and if they don't have any food, they will eat each other, which is kind it's, of interesting. It's really cool. Um, but I haven't met any of the others yet, so I'm excited to see. Them. I haven't met any zombie fired wildlife, but it's in. Yeah, no, I haven't either. But like I say, a lot of my a lot of my playtime so far in Days Gone has just been me roaming around and clearing out nests and doing all the busy the work. Photo mode. Oh, the photo mode is so good <laughs> i'm not a huge fan of photo modes in games i don't usually <sighs> utilize them uh, i'm not saying that i dislike them i'm not saying that it's bad to have them i just don't personally often touch them no nah, i love photo mode i remember playing play world of warcraft and like positioning everybody from the guild then just like clipping the screen and now you get to mess with the bloom saturation vignette and they have advanced filters so you can just change everything it's superb do they have a so duck face good. filter though? That's the question. Do they have a duck <laughs> can face? change his face, yeah. <laughs> you I can. don't think he has duck face though. Oh, ruined, ruined opportunity. <laughs> I've seen a lot of because like I played through Spider Man. I platted Spider Man also. That's another thing that I did this week. Good job. Um, but the photo yeah. mode in Spider Man, it was like it was there, and like one of the collectibles you get is for taking photos of certain locations. And I did that because it was like you're collecting something because of it. But I never really used the photo mode because like God of War's photo mode was supposed to be like really good with the posing and stuff. Like that. Never touched it um it's not really me but i i've had i've they're doing it more and more in games and i think it seems to be there's a lot of people that it does appeal to um but i see it the same as i see instagram like it's there i'm still not going to post anything like I, I understand i can take photos but i haven't really been doing it see i love it in stream because like the best way of like ending a stream is like right how can we capture how this stream has been and then sit with your chat and get them to sort of like figure out how you're making a good a good screenshot to do a summary of how that stream's been then you have like a little memento of how awesome that adventure has been for that for that stream, etc. Oh, so yeah, really like cool that. yeah, absolutely. So yeah, this week I've been playing Lorelei. Um, I've been playing it on YouTube and on Twitch. Funnily enough, I started it on as a YouTube. It's actually my first ever Let's Play on YouTube, which is um, really, really good, going really, really well. Lots of learning processes, lots of technical difficulties, lots of um, <laughs> little mistakes that I made in my. I'm not going to talk about because. Anybody who's watched my Lorelei playthrough will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, or maybe they didn't know 
nervous until you said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, so for those of you who haven't watched my Laura Live playthrough, in the first one I had frame drops, in my second one I had an audio desync issue. And like, I was like so paranoid about my audio desync in my Lorelei playthrough. And I was like, oh my God, people are going to hate me. They're going to think it's crap. And then I was like, yeah, sorry for the audio desync. And people were like, what audio desync? And I'm like, <laughs> well, they were probably looking at the gameplay more than my face, which is probably a good thing. Um, because that game is actually really, really good. It's, um, for those of you who don't know what Lorelei is, it's a horror point and click. And it's the sequel to The Cat Lady. And I think it's also a sequel to Downfall, which I don't, I'm not sure because I haven't played either of those games yet. But it's this really, really cute little, uh, I say cute, it's not cute at all. It's this really <laughs> little uh, horrifyingly depressing and and poignant uh, horror point and click. And I really enjoyed it. It's not very long. It's about five or so hours and uh, it has a very heavy and depressing theme. But the story is so, so good. And uh, I don't want to talk about too much of it because I don't want to spoil anything because it is very story driven. So I don't want to go into plot points and, and spoil anything. But uh, if you haven't checked out Lorelei, if you do like um you know point and clicks if you like horror by the way the puzzle elements in this one are super simplistic it wasn't difficult at all um i i struggled for about five minutes on one of them and that was it um but the story is great very very interesting it's one of those stories that starts off one way and then unfolds over time and becomes something completely different and uh, there are actually multiple endings there's choices that you can make in that game there's dialogue choices that you can make which affect the dialogue and then there's actual gameplay choices that you can make that have different outcomes again that i'm not going to spoil so um i played it on youtube i enjoyed it so much that i actually went back to twitch and i played it a completely different way we're going through uh on twitch we're trying to go through like a, a bad ending so i'm trying to do every bad choice in that game i'm going through all the bad dialogues we're being an absolute asshole to be honest um, yeah, I, swung, I swung by and it was like actually this is really interesting watching mm. how the characters are reacting and stuff and it made me want to like get the game because i love adventure yeah i'm a fan i usually prefer ones that have a little bit more um a bit more meat to them like i like them to have interesting puzzles like i really like broken age that was a really good one and there was a game that i played at egx last year called minutes to midnight which is coming out later this year which is similar that had you know challenging puzzles that you actually get stuck on whereas this one the puzzles i, I hesitate to call them even puzzles really most of them were more you know oh well i need to light a candle so where is the lighter you know it's like you just find the lighter and it's pretty obvious um i find sometimes those games go one of two ways either it's like that or i recently did the daedalic entertainment um escape from deponia series like all of them yeah and there's some puzzles in there which is right click the object time but i've right clicked it once didn't do anything so i've gone away it's yeah like, no go back and click it two more times it's like that's not a puzzle that's just spamming every item in the room yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean they <laughs> they have sometimes they have problems where with these games that the again the puzzles are kind of like obfuscated and you're like why did you do that like i know that there's some of them where you've got to click on the exact part and so you're clicking on you know a part of an object and it's not the exact part of the object that you need to click on um but there's not there's not really any of that in in lorelei lorelei definitely like will highlight objects as you walk past them because it's it's 2d you can only go left or right so as you walk past them it's like examine this item or use this item so it really doesn't doesn't trick you doesn't fool you i think there was only one part of that game that i would call a, an actual puzzle um, and that was where you had to match up the items with with whose um grave they belong to and it was it really wasn't difficult it was pretty it was super simple if i can figure it out anybody could figure that out but the story was really really fantastic it was definitely a bit of a bit of a dark and depressing one though so if you are somebody who struggles with you know there's a lot of themes of things like domestic abuse there's a lot of themes of murder death and all that kind of stuff so if you're somebody who doesn't like that maybe you know maybe just maybe look a bit of a gameplay of it first before you make a purchase but i would highly recommend it for anybody who likes a bit of uh of horror point and click adventures i don't think anyone else has played it have you you know guys none of you played it no, so i hadn't even so. i hadn't even heard of it um i can't remember how i heard of it now um but i hadn't even heard of it but when i saw it was being a horror game i love horror games i uh i just <laughs> gave i gave it a chance and i'm glad that i did um so that's from well, page but i wasn't like... yeah it Sorry, feels really on theme with other like games you've played, like as someone who doesn't do point and click horror games, like Detention. You did it feels really similar yeah. to that, like the, the way the art is almost. Yeah, like, definitely. Like, there's there's definitely a, a a comparison there to Detention. If you've never played Detention, same sort of game, point and click, two D horror. Um, I would say that Detention was scarier than this. This game wasn't horrendously scary there was a few jump scares in there there was a few bits that were a little bit sort of similar to silent hill but the eeriness of silent hill you know there's no real sort of there's a couple of monsters in there but there's nothing really that, that like scared me scared me but it, it intrigued me and 
apart from one section of the game that was a little bit slow, the game really captivated me and, and intrigued me the whole way. I, I really wanted to find out what happened next. I wanted to know what was going to happen. And as they kept introducing new characters, I wanted to know, you know, who are they? What are they about? Uh, there's also really some really good voice acting. The voice acting, I would say, is um sort of like very professional amateur like you can tell that the voice <laughs> actors aren't professionals but they do a really good job uh jim sterling's in there he plays a character young Ye. i don't know if any of you guys know young Ye. uh young Ye, sorry he's in there there's a couple of other people that are in there that aren't necessarily professional voice actors but they do really good jobs and i really like that um but yeah go check it out if you want to see a playthrough with it my playthrough is mostly available i'm uploading a new episode today slash yesterday sorry elliot um and this then my final part <laughs> well my final part will be uploaded after this so this is uploaded on saturday my final part is probably going to be on monday so that'll be the final that'll be the ending of the game which is the most interesting part of the entire game it gets it very much builds up to a really really good ending and i and i really really loved it so that'll be uploaded on monday so if you have been enjoying it let me know um also by the way we keep forgetting to ask you guys to like this podcast if you do like it so if you have enjoyed any of these episodes of the podcast please like the video please let me know in the comments if you are enjoying them just tells us that you know it's worth doing and that you guys are enjoying it and also if you have any feedback that's not super critical and harsh on me let me know in the comments <laughs> also um, because we are still learning okay we are still learning but no that's what we've all been playing this week um so why don't we get into some of the topics then we're going to start with dead by daylight because it's a nice quick and simple nice quick and simple topic for those who haven't heard behavior the uh, studio behind dead by daylight have done another oopsie so they already did a, an oopsie not that long ago they accidentally leaked some information about ash the upcoming survival, the survivor that's just come out um they accidentally leaked that on playstation 4 and they've just done another they've just done another leak ash? haven't they was it ash or jane jane's um, no it was ash it was ash that they they leaked by accident they uh, oh, accidentally okay. announced it on playstation and um because people people were like well i guess we know we're getting ash now and they were like oh yeah it's coming <laughs> coming next week um right. but they've done it again they've uh, dead by daylight behavior have uh, accidentally leaked the the next killer and they've done it in the most in the most yeah, i'm thinking accidentally yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're bordering <laughs> on conspiracy theory now but I they conspiracy <laughs> well, i mean how many YouTube times doesn't. can you make the same mistake really I yeah mean, do they have a marketing department at all because is this what it is well like, it I'm, wouldn't I'm it confused. wouldn't be the marketing department it was, so the the way that it worked was they pushed out a new build they were supposed to release the patch which brought the end game so the end game and the the balance changes it's a mid a mid chapter patch i think they call it um and they were meant to push that a couple of days ago and somebody i don't know who <laughs> somebody accidentally accidentally pushed out a developer build instead of instead of the new patch they pushed out a developer build and whoever was quick enough to download whoever was super excited waiting to download the new patch probably a lot of content creators to be honest um they got access to this developer build and it had some placeholders in there and it showed the new killer the, the new killer was in there and it's been announced it's confirmed it was all real it was all it was all spoilers. true spoilers spoilers if you don't want to know the new killer i mean you probably already know by now it's yeah. all over the internet <laughs> but yeah it's a uh, ghost face from scream and or scary movie if you call that canon um but yeah so they they accidentally released that people have uh got a hold of him and then they've played him they've seen him they've seen his power they've seen one of his perks what do you guys think you you guys think that they actually did this on purpose do you think there's a do you think I mean, there's actually i we already went through this last week with like sonic where i was like i think they did it just to get the rage market in i think companies, <laughs> have, companies have started to realize like how much power there is in and free advertising there is in twitter in uh like the new sphere around gaming stuff like that. and i think they're trying to take advantage of it um and it's getting to a point where almost every games company seems to be trying to take advantage of it so it's just becoming like a normal part of like our community's news cycle of just yeah. like oh someone's leaked something like, <laughs> did they leak something and it's just like yeah they leaked it they accidentally dm'd this creator with this information it's like that's not so much leaking as telling people <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you know in the day and age now people are so savvy if something gets you know nothing goes under the radar anymore if something is on the internet people very I true very true people will comb through patch notes they will comb through everything to find i mean this has been going on for years people used to do this with world of warcraft whenever they you know the um the test realms people would go through it with a comb and be like oh i saw a placeholder for a five million mount that costs five million and There's it's going to be a bit controversy like this 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 and this which means like this might happen it's like, yeah exactly 
I, exactly. I'm never the one that's up on this stuff. I, I find out about it like a week later. I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and, uh, and I just carry on. <laughs> So to I did me, watch a YouTube video of um, made by the King with the release of like the different animations for the ghost face killer. Yeah. And um, they do show you the Mori, which is super fun. Um, yeah. They have him taking a selfie with the dead character. After. <laughs> yeah. It's really cheesy as well. Like it's not just a <laughs> selfie. He's like on the floor being like, eh, with the, yeah. with the, I like it's... the idea that they're going to they're gonna use the scary movie scream uh, ghost face yeah. instead of the scream ghost face. Well, so it's... I, I want so, them to do like the uh, was up face where he's got his tongue out. If that's not a cosmetic... Yeah, they've got to. Got which that. is I interesting. Think, yeah, there's, a, there's a few cosmetics. There's one that's all red, one that's all yeah. blue. Uh, there's one a, with, a um, devil horns one. one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the all red one. It's yeah. got little devil horns at the top. Mm -hmm. But that brings an interesting so, point because up until now, there have been no cosmetics for the licensed killers. And a lot of people have said, oh, it's because they'd have to pay royalties for the licenses, blah, blah, blah. But not only have they this time come out with cosmetics for Ghostface, they're actually bringing out some pig cosmetics too. So as far as I'm aware, it's not a licensed killer and that because he's in a different jaw than anything. The only similarity is actually the mask. Okay. And the mask isn't licensed? I don't know. As far I as mean, I'm aware. they sell those masks everywhere. Like yeah, I've seen millions of them. Everywhere. Yeah, and that's um, why when you change the cosmetics, the mask actually looks slightly different with the horns and stuff. So as far mm. as I'm aware, it's it's not actually licensed. I think the only one that's licensed is Michael Myers. Yeah, they have wow. the um, the soundtrack that goes with it as well, which yeah. I'm, I yeah. needs to be licensed. Yeah, whereas, of course. Music is music is you can't play yeah. music without somebody being like, I own that. Yeah, you um, can't sing a song on YouTube without, the, without some saying Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Whereas uh, the pig, I think, they don't actually claim at any point it's it's anything to do with, like... No, the they do, anything. because the, the chapter that they sell is called the Saw chapter. Oh, is it? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. again, we don't know, but the thing is, is at the end of the day, like, it, they are licensed, but... It, you know who knows what the deal is they have with the license holders the license holders might have been like yeah go ahead use rip you know like not every license holder is going to be no you must pay us money um so we don't know we don't know what the they may have been like hey look it's more exposure for your movies who who knows what goes on behind the scenes but it's interesting that for the longest time every license killer in in dead by daylight has not had cosmetics and now two of them have you know, mm. um, I mean, I would love to see some Michael Myers cosmetics, but I don't think that one's ever going to happen. Never going to yeah. happen. What you cosmetic uh, Myers with it? Oh, you could do so <laughs> many things with Michael Myers. Oh, you could do them without, without the mask. The would, it be, do... would it be something funny like the Santa clown? Like, is that what you're thinking for Michael Myers? Or they like, would never let you do it. <laughs> yeah, one with Michael Myers, but like, nah, can't do it. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I I'm just like the. For anybody who doesn't play Dead by Daylight, the killers never speak. The only killer that speaks in Dead by Daylight is the the most recent one, the Plague. And even she, when she speaks, she speaks in a long forgotten language that nobody speaks. That's how they spun it. Um, but I'm so like, I want, I just want some sound files because all I would love to hear is Ghostface just being in a match, just being like, what's up? <laughs> I would just, oh my God. Like I, I would take everything bad thing I've said about Dead by Daylight, I would take back 10 out of 10 game. <laughs> you know like i just I want it to be the um scary movie one because like some of the voice lines in the scary, yeah exactly like, uh, yeah. like even the same scene from the was up there it's like just chilling killing like, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's so much stuff you could use and it's just like i mean yes. this is ripe for some stream fun i feel like i feel like we're gonna have to do some cosplay streams it's gonna have to happen um i guarantee <laughs> you on the day of release there will be at least 10 streams with what's up in the title or run bitch run one of them you know there's gonna be some, there's gonna be some scary movie references or something it's gonna be hilarious but i actually i'm really looking forward to it i like the um the idea of Ghostface. um I, he's very he's very much a, a a scary killer when i say scary he looks like he's gonna be a bit of a jump scare kind of killer he can mm -hmm. uh reduce his terror radius down to zero temporarily and he can he can crouch and lean around corners which i've seen him leaning around the corners i can imagine if, if you're running around a corner and he's like hi i can imagine that would be <laughs> quite scary um i was really confused by the like because so he can crouch run but he seems to have a faster running emote a slower walking emote and so, can, like do this leaning i like obviously at the moment because we're looking at like placeholder stuff i don't understand how it all fits into a character system according no, to sure the king's video he's like the fastest killer they've had yet had. well it's interesting because like so legion's just been nerfed and i played a little bit of legion this morning and he feels a lot slower now and um and Legion was the fastest killer. Oh. So if they were to make Ghostface now a super fast killer after they've just nerfed Legion, that would be like exactly what they did with Decisive Strike, where they nerfed Decisive Strike and then brought out Metal of Man with a licensed survivor. So uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see when we actually see the... 
Well, Legion, they they sped up his walking speed. And yeah, like, but his base walking speed is now just the same as all the other killers, aside from the solo right. ones. So, because again, I played him this morning just to test him out, and he doesn't feel all that great anymore. I mean, I don't like Legion. You know I don't. I don't like playing as him, and I don't like playing against him. Um, but they seem to be kind of like sort of they've nerfed legion and now they're bringing out ghostface which is going to be a better version of legion almost almost it, not the same mm. but do you know what i mean he's filling a gap that they've now just like, created i feel like the problem with legion was it was trying to remedy like two issues it was trying to fix um tunneling and it was trying yeah. to fix gun rush and you can't put those two things in one killer like it either yeah. needs to be able to do one or the other and that's why i think it was really broken because like yeah not being able to do anything other than mend and then die which you so, still do i mean legion the mending mechanic hasn't yeah, gone which is why i'm like, not a big fan of the changes but i don't see that being the same problem with ghostface because like at least you don't have the whole mending thing going on like, no that, you just you just have instant downs with ghostface <laughs> he can expose you um but no i'm i'm really interested i i really like i know you're like a little bit different with me taylor like you want to you like a little bit more fantastical don't you like you really like the idea of the plague i really like the knife killers like i like the idea of a, a slasher you know i guess it's not even that it's just like sorry my dogs are barking it's okay well um I'll... so it's not even it's not even that i like I just like variety. Like how many yeah. knife killers with the same same thing? Yeah. I just want something I want something more creative. Oh. Like you have the opportunity to do whatever you want. Yeah. And you give us more knife killers. <laughs> yeah, I, that's one of the things like I'm not a huge dead by the eye play, uh, player by, by yeah. any means. I've tried it a couple of times. I enjoy playing the killer. I hate playing a survivor. And I enjoyed yeah. it when the first few killers came out because you had like the doctor and the nurse and all that sort of stuff and they were like uh phantasmical uh, phantas whatever uh ghosts <laughs> and stuff like that and monsters and i liked that and yeah. now when it's like so far that's uh the clown who's just a bloke clown have uh ghost face bloke in a mask who kills people um legion bloke in a mask who kills people and it's like well, <laughs> or a lady in a mask or a lady in a mask, or a lady. mask. Yeah. So, and, and and the pig as well who has a knife who is in a mask kills people. come on dude like the the idea of, of like a horror game is it will the horror game is that some of the creatures are horrid but yeah none of them like are. give me like, give me a fast zombie that rips your face yeah. off like, like give i me would take some zombies give the huntress me, like, a is another human one. or something yeah. that like rips out your heart like come on you have so many opportunities <laughs> like, the fact they I... haven't had an alien based sort of killer yet. Yeah. now when you say alien do you mean like xenomorph alien from, i mean like, like... A, and just a, a just an extraterrestrial alien. creature because they couldn't there is yeah. no way well, they are going to be well this is this is interesting when you get into the the lore of dead by daylight there there is a backstory and there is a lore to dead by daylight and the idea yeah. is is that the the place that you are in is a real place within the world it is almost like a silent hill-esque thing where it exists and you and the killers have been kidnapped by the entity so even the killers they didn't choose to go there the entity sort of stole them and like right you work for me now go murder people and so there is this like kind of backstory so i kind of like i feel like a lot of it you know they want to try and keep it within that realm of, of possibility and like even the plague you know she was ripped out from a, from history she was taken from uh so i don't know like a mayan culture or like a tribal culture from from the the past and she was ripped into dead by daylight so even then law wise it makes sense but i mean there's there's no I mean, reason you it couldn't still fit it probably in. fit law wise with an alien i mean I've, et doesn't seem like too hard to stick a sack over him and go away like Oh god, she imagine ET. ET next killer confirmed. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, that's what we need. We need a survivor called Elliot, and I'll be well <laughs> But just something a bit more mm. I don't know. Just far fetched. Because even the Huntress was as another human based killer. And I think now like for me, who's somebody who wasn't generally interested in, in Dead by Daylight anyway, seeing this next killer, I'm like, yeah, it's Ghostface, but I'm still not that interested. I just, yeah. I, I personally think it desperately like a new game, so that uh, extra killers. So like, is there a new game mode? Yeah. I'm yeah, like, we talked like, about this. I, I've i played it, as I say, I tried, and it's like, you fix the generators, and then when they released the new map, I was like, oh, sick, it's going to be like uh, uh, a new game mode, because I was, I got into Dead by Daylight before it even released properly. Yeah. I was really into it, and then the new map came out, I was like, sick, I'll give it another go, and it's like, oh, but it's the same 
game mode. Yeah, there yeah. is only uh, one game mode. And we said yeah. this before, because like the couple of weeks ago, we talked about the uh, exploits and one of the exploits being that people have figured out how to get more than one killer in a game, which was people were super excited about. And Behaviour were like, nope, cool. we'll ban you for that shit. And I'm just like, people want different things to do. I don't see why well, they couldn't add in some game modes just for fun that don't uh, give you rank and don't give you blood points, you know? Well, we were also talking about how they were um, talking about a, or there was rumor of a secondary objective and then the end game collapse came out and we're like, well, that's not really an objective. Yeah. So yeah. like, I was excited, like, oh, we're gonna have some sort of variation you're gonna have to do something other than generators and totems like let's see what's up let's go and then we get an end game collapse which well, i'm not the, mad about the I end game like collapse it. is purely just a fix to a problem people survivors were bullying killers and they weren't leaving and the killer can't end the match because if you can if you cancel the match if you quit you lose all your you lose two pips and so, you lose all your blood points so, so it just was for, a, just for the uninitiated so yeah un, an end game collapse so the latest patch, they've uh, basically put a system in place that once one of the exit gates are opened, survivors are on a three minute timer. And if you don't leave within that three minutes, you just instantly die. And that counts oh, see, as a kill good. for the killer. Yeah. One of the things that made me such a salty bitch when I played it was like, <laughs> they're just mocking me now. They're still at the gate. If I go at yeah. them, they're going to run away. So I, what do mm -hmm. I do now? I'm just going to sit here and get like pissy because yeah. you'll just leave. You've won. Yeah, which is, again, it was a solution to a problem. It has affected some balance, some perks are now useless. And, you know, there is nuances to it. If somebody's on a hook, the countdown gets paused. So it's not like the killer can abuse it. And, you know, they still have a little bit to work out because I've noticed that they've talked about things like the basement stairs, um, you know, that the killer shouldn't <laughs> be able to block the survivors in. But I'm not going to lie, I did that this morning playing as the Huntress. I blocked some people in the basement stairs. So it's still possible. Um, I am the worst. Oh my God, that match was so great though. Like, I'm not going to go into it, but like, I had my best hatchet ever and i'm gonna I've, I've got the video i'll post it in my discord or something later i've got the best hatchet throw um i um i remember back when i first ever picked it up by there like you kill people without putting them on the hook you could just hit them on the floor get less points you just kill them you can still uh, do that in certain situations if you take an add-on you take an item called a mori that will let you do that to certain people but you've got to hook them at least once first and there's certain perks and stuff that can let you do that but generally you want to get people on hooks just to um, uh just to flip back around to what we were saying about it being leaked uh, I actually do believe it was honestly leaked because um, I remember recent, uh, not recently, um, I think last year. Do you remember when I think Rosa got fully leaked? They gave they put the full game on Steam as a demo. If you yeah. The full game. Yeah. Like, I do think it was like a, an honest day. I mean, it it certainly could be, and again, you know, it, it's. I don't want to say how easily done it is, but you know, if it's the sake of oh, this is the file that we should upload, and oh, this is the file that I accidentally so, uploaded, you know. Yesterday, I put a new video on YouTube, and one file was named Days Gone A, one file was named Days Gone A Final. It's like, ah, oh, well, if you click this one. Uh, yeah. And it was the wrong one. And that's yeah, I mean, but that's different that you're one person working on a YouTube channel. This is a, a studio that's, you know, making a lot of money and has lots of people in there. But again, mistakes can happen. I'm not going to yeah. like, you know, no, no one's angry about it. No one's like, oh, why did you leak it? Like, we all want the information. We all like it. It's not a, yeah. it's not the end of the world. And I'm sure that person didn't get in too much trouble. At the end of the day, like we said before, it's a bit of free marketing, isn't it? It's like, oh, what did Behaviour do this week? You know, it gets people talking about it. Um, but that's enough about Dead by Day. Like, we've all, we've kind of, you know, it's not the most exciting news, but it's something that everyone's talking about. So that's that. Um, let's go on to the actual news. Let's go on to the, the real, the real stuff. Um, the first one I want to get onto is um, a little stab at Bethesda. And uh, I'm not going to lie, ever since Fallout 76 came out, I love having little stabs at Bethesda. So for those who haven't heard, Bethesda are in hot water again. And this is nothing to do with Fallout 76. This is just to do with Bethesda being Bethesda, which is uh, <laughs> something that they do now. This is what they do. But uh, if you haven't heard, Bethesda are in a little bit of trouble because they have released, or they were going to release, a tabletop RPG adventure. Um, what was it called? It was called something to do with Elsewhere. Elsewhere. Was it just called Elsewhere? It's to match their new deal, their new expansion pack for Elsewhere. Yeah, so they were going to release this uh, tabletop RPG adventure. And somebody noticed that it was kind of similar. And when I say kind of similar, <laughs> very, very similar to a licensed Wizards of the Coast Dungeons and Dragons adventure. Um, let me get into this. Let me get into this and show you some of the comparisons, because this is not even funny in, in, this, in the state. Well, it is funny. It's hilarious. But it's not any chance of this being a, an accident this is actual plagiarism this is something that has been taken and adapted and tried to be almost sold by somebody else which is by the way i'm not an expert i'm not a lawyer i know you can't do that you can't take somebody else's work 
change it a little bit and sell it. Not allowed to do that. There are laws that protect against this. But anyway, let me read out some of the comparisons. So this is from, this is the introduction page from the licensed Wizard of the Coast Dungeons, Dragons and Adventure. This is the first couple of lines and then I'll read out the couple of lines from uh, the Elder Scrolls version. So there's nothing like the desert to make people feel small and insignificant. That's the first line. And on the elsewhere version, nothing beats the desert to make people feel small and unimportant. A little bit similar, but that's, that's fine though. That's just one line, right? Well, you know, it's it's possible, right? It's possible. Yeah, let's go into the thinking. yeah. Let's go into the second line. In every direction, huge dunes roll across the landscape. Their second line, in every direction, enormous dunes roll across the landscape. They just like clicked like a synonym for the random descriptive words. One hundred percent, and it gets even worse than that. <laughs> it gets even worse yeah. than that. Not only do they plagiarize this and obviously rip it off, but then they even start to do it, and then they start to fail and become grammatically a little bit iffy. So the next line <laughs> is, um, "And an even bigger sky looms above." That's the proper version, and in the elsewhere version. Uh, and, and an even larger empty air skies above it. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Someone knows okay. how to use the th thesaurus tool in words. And, yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. And this, this got, goes, this goes on and on and on. There are loads. I'm not, I'm not talking about one or two. In fact, if, uh, if I get into another, another page, there is a character that has been accidentally, they haven't even bothered to change the name. So in the actual version, there's a character called Chandra Stoll, Chandra Stoll, a priestess in Parnast. And in the elsewhere version, Chandra Stoll, a priest in Rimen. Well, like, you haven't even changed the name. The spelling's exactly the same. It's not the like, gender, and that's the yeah, they changed the gender and the place of the, where the priest is from, but they haven't like, I just, I can't understand how they thought nobody on the internet was going to figure this shit out. Like, I just don't get the thought process. Like it doesn't. So what? there's a little bit more to it. So this, uh, like I say, this is based on a Wizards of the Coast license adventure. And uh, the rule set for this adventure is apparently open source. It is a rule set that Wizards have said, you can use this rule set however you want. You can go and make your own game with this rule set. You can go and use our rule set. You can adapt it. You can change it, do whatever you want. The rule set. And so obviously the rule set in this is exactly the same. We were talking about it before, Elliot, weren't we? That the, the the rules are like, oh, there is one cart that has all of the, the weapons and there's one that has all of the food and it's exactly the same, except in the original it's pulled by camels and in this one it's pulled by horses and that's like that, the only difference. Um, yeah. But the rule set is fine. They said you can do that, absolutely. But the actual adventure is licensed because somebody wrote that, you know, or a team of people wrote that. And right. they've come along and just stolen it essentially i don't want to get into any legal troubles but it's essentially theft that's what plagiarism is it's theft of a copied work you know it's, it's theft of a published work and i know that when i was at university and i'm sure you guys you know will, will back me up on this that when i was at university i plagiarized somebody's uh, work even if you weren't selling it you know if we we're talking about like uh research here if i plagiarized someone's work i would get in a lot of trouble like a hell of a lot of trouble 100 percent um, exactly and in fact i know somebody who did get kicked out of my uni for doing that Same. um but what do you guys think about this this whole topic i mean this is bethesda a company that like used to be beloved even though you know there's a running joke about how bethesda games have always been buggy they've always have been that's not it's not a, that's you know it's not a lie um but they used to be this beloved company and it seems that since they released fallout 76 they seem to be doing every shady business practice they could ever do you know just a quick recap we had fallout 76 a, a broken buggy game at launch they then came out with nuka cola rom which was oh go and watch the youtube videos on it the nuka cola rom that they were selling for i think it was like 80 or 90 dollars i think it was was an absolute sham um get that bomb ass jacket Oh yeah, the jacket, which was ridiculously expensive, which looked absolute trash. I mean, subject. Well, there was a courier bag as Sub well that they said it was. Yeah, the courier bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the carrier bag, well, carrier bag. Uh, the um people who pre-ordered the like really expensive edition of Fallout seventy six were promised a canvas bag, and it said in the marketing, "This is a canvas bag." And when they got it, it was cheap nylon. But influencers, YouTubers, and streamers got sent out these free uh packs. Be like, hey, you know, promote Fallout seventy six, and they got canvas bags. <laughs> the well is they basically so everyone that got the nylon bags obviously loads of people were unhappy with Bethesda and they were completely in the right to be unhappy with Bethesda yeah. who then went oh what we'll do is we'll give you a cosmetic in the game um, they gave you currency they gave you yeah, I think it was so like a, 500 like, points yeah, if they're yeah, bullshit like currency pounds worth of currency mm. when you spent 70 pound the game that they haven't delivered on yeah um but apparently and I don't know because I didn't fact check too much into this 
there were people on Twitter saying that um, if you've basically been um, subject to false advertisement and you get offered a gift by the company that... Yeah, you should refuse it. You should refuse it because yeah. they can then take away your right to basically like sue or... Well, like, it makes it harder in court if you turn around and go, well, they offered you a solution and you went, yeah, I'll take the, I'll yeah, take the solution. Yeah. It's, a, it's a settlement and therefore you have chosen to settle... Yeah. Regardless Again, none none of us are lawyers, but you know, it, it it makes sense. It makes sense that that could be a possible so thing. A, we also thing and then they caught up with another shady thing. We <laughs> also forgot after that there was the microtransaction store controversy where they had a load of Christmas limited time items that were on sale. They were like, oh, was so much price and now is so much price, but they were never they were never sold at the previous oh, wow. price. I didn't I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this oh, was yeah, the yeah. this was the last of the of the Fallout seventy six controversies. Where? They they. They had deep one. discounts. Oh, did I miss one? The uh, pay to win, where you buy repair kits. Oh, I didn't hear about you that. I heard that. Yes, yeah, so they released on the on the store now. You can buy repair kits, which, as far as I was aware, was instant use, and it repair all your items back to a hundred percent. And you could do them while in combat. And um, you can't get them in the game unless you buy them. Uh, you get them very rarely in the game, and they're like yeah. advanced ones that do hundred and fifty. But if you've got enough money, you can buy loads of them. Your armor will never get damaged. So another promise of, you know, it's just cosmetic turns yeah. out not to be oh, the case. Great. But my and point then. was, my point was we had all of these controversies and people people basically went from loving Bethesda as a company to hating them. I mean, it's, I don't think it's unfair to say a lot of people do not like Bethesda anymore. So and I, I was okay. And then they did the whole, um, the microtransactions, Elder Scroll Blades. Yeah. Which was like yeah, astronomically which... high microtransactions for a beta game. Yeah, and, and like, people have what, said that it's not even doing? a good game either. No, it's um, trash. Yeah, I, it, it, it's it, mobile it, trash. It, <laughs> yeah. it's the idea is really good. It could be an awesome game if you're a big Elder Scrolls fan and you want to do something on the go. Uh, but it bricked my phone and it just, it kind of janky. And then it's like, hey, pay us money. And it's like, but this isn't even the game. This is the beta. Yeah, but you're going to pay us money? Yeah. No. But yeah. Have money, though. Oh, but, <laughs> but, 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 yeah. but money? Yeah um i i hear you have money we like money so what's the problem uh, i haven't actually touched the elder scrolls blades be purely because i don't touch mobile games anymore i, so I don't even touch to them all now if you do want to get the shot you have to, i uh... i out of principle don't play them um i will play them occasionally for my own personal use if there's a little crappy game that i want to play on mobile i'll play it but generally speaking i don't buy into them i don't even download them because i don't want to i don't want to support that industry not because look if you're a mobile gamer like you're absolutely fine you enjoy your mobile games but the considering that the pc gaming industry seems to be trying to convince us to play mobile games i'm like no i'm a pc gamer i'm a console gamer i'm not a mobile gamer so i kind of do it out of not spite out of protest um but i'm not i'm just not interested so i don't i haven't really played elder scrolls but i've heard that it's really bad full of microtransactions another you know cash grab but the reason why i talked about that is because people seem to not like bethesda anymore and i feel like bethesda blizzard all of these companies that really should be working super hard to try and regain some customer goodwill why do they keep doing these things like why why you know this i mean this this case of this plagiarism is purely just like another cash grab you know it's like how can we make money super quickly super easily without doing any work and not only that it's kind of illegal um so what do you guys think do you think like how how does a company this large for it like they they don't think it through and then they end up buying stuff and then they get the game they go okay well i want to win so i'm going to buy more like i want this stuff i'm going to pay for it and they don't they don't think it through or like they don't they have the budget for it so people are just buying it anyway because they're, they're like this is my hobby i'm going to spend money on it like maybe they just don't have enough backlash like where people like us like this is like something we're really passionate about we're like no 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 this is wrong where like m maybe just the average user doesn't really think it through that hard, you know? Casual market has exploded like yeah. mm -hmm. since, uh, I mean, when I was a kid and I, and I had a console stuff uh, and now everybody pretty much, I think it was like a one in three homes has a console on it now, which is, yeah. Uh, and console gaming is generally, I think where it's been focused at. That, that's your, it's your middle-aged man, your middle-aged woman come back from work. They've got an hour before the kids get home, whatever. So they want to bang out a game and stuff. And it's like, right. Okay, I get an hour to play, and then someone turns around and goes, "Now, if you spend an hour, you'll get a hundredth of the weight item. But give us a tenner, you have this <laughs> item now, and then your hour can be messing around with that item on Call of Duty." Yeah, Whatever. I mean, with regards to microtransactions, I mean, this is a uh, this is a whole other topic that we could probably talk about, which we are going to talk about 
when it comes to the loot box stuff that we're talking about in a little bit. But this this actual topic is, um, you know, more more about the actual plagiarism of uh, uh, of somebody else's work and how a company as large as Bethesda, who could have potentially sold this this you know RPG to to a lot of people, like how did they ever think they were going to get away with plagiarizing something to that degree? Because it's not even just inspiration. It's not like they went, oh, you know, we want to make a game that's also set in a desert and it has all these themes. It's it's pure plagiarism. It is literally, I stole your work and changed some words. You know, somebody read through that and went, I'm going to adapt this to elsewhere. Like, how does a company that large think it can get away? Like, do you think that the internet's not going to find out? Well, the dumbest thing is, it's not just a company that large. It's, I think it's just about, just less than a year ago, Bethesda sued Warner Brothers for lifting the root code for Fallout Shelter. Yeah. So they sued Warner Brothers for plagiarizing their content. And then less than a year later, they've just straight up done the same thing to uh, Wizards of Coast. Like, yeah. so maybe they, maybe they the... think they found a loophole with the rules being able to be reapplied to new content, but then they just continue maybe. on. And, and... So the one thing I would put in is I would hide, I would assume it probably wasn't parity as now. Uh, yeah. I believe it was uh, Bethesda in the Netherlands that put the elsewhere thing out, and it would probably be a case of it wasn't the entirety of Bethesda. It was one small department who someone went right, you need to get on there. Which point this one yeah. small department, which could have been three blokes, it could have been it could have been like a small group of people, and they could have been like, yeah, that's a good idea. That's fine. We'll put that out, and they'll pay us for it, and that's fine. At which point, then you know, put it out to a giant audience, and there's two authors of that. And it's like, well, as long as those two people out of the billions of people in the world don't find out, it's chill. It's cool. And these people don't realize that D&D has this ginormous fan base. Yeah. At which point, it's not two people who have to find out. It's millions of people. And then they yeah. suddenly realize, ah, oh, I've made a mistake. We saw it in a lot of YouTube <laughs> videos, like last year, early this year as well, when yeah. players went through the roof. And it's like, no one will notice. It's like, no, people are going to notice because there's a fan notice. base. Mm -hmm. no you have a really you have a really good point it's entirely possible that this was you know they they said hey just you small team of people go make this product you know we'll get back to you whatever it's entirely possible i mean the my again my counter to that would be that if you are this giant corporation like bethesda you have all of this money if you're going to hire a team of people to make a product like this i mean i know it's a tabletop rpg it's not a video game so maybe they they didn't want to put as many resources on it because it's not a main focus for them it's a side project but even so like you must have a marketing team you must have a legal team like nobody caught this nobody was like do you know what i mean they you didn't probably. test it you didn't test it to anybody clearly they didn't send out 20 20 testers to test it because somebody would have noticed well i mean that's the thing these days is that we're not just the players are we we are the test people who get this product, yeah we are the testers because that that slight margin having to pay for testers or having to pay a little bit more for, for getting that marketing involved rather than outsourcing the team do it because bear in mind if they if, because bethesda netherlands they could have outsourced it under bethesda netherlands name yeah very true it, and, and then they, this thing could be like yeah we'll do it for you i've lied got it and they go there you go we tested it it's fine like yeah. we don't know the inner workings and what contracts were signed so it could and, and as soon as bethesda have found out they've been like ah we're going to look into this. Yeah. They've tried to do damage control by putting a Facebook post out, pointing a finger. Someone from marketing then go, probably point the finger. Okay, yeah. I'm going to delete that post <laughs> yeah, just in yeah, case yeah. anybody else tries to speak <laughs> Which you can't delete it. If you put yeah, anything on the internet, the internet, somebody it's screenshots there. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, even we as small creators, we have to deal with that shit. People screenshot us all the time. So, you know, when you're, <laughs> when you're a company that large, people are going to screenshot in large quantities, but no, I still, I think at the end of the day, you know, like if it is on the, um, if it is just a handful of people that did it, I mean, if they work for Bethesda, maybe they need a little bit of a, a talking to, and if they don't work for Bethesda, maybe don't work with them again, you know, maybe I actually imagine, hire somebody. I would imagine they would probably push to that door so fast their head spin. Yeah. Like there, there is. There is no way a company like Bethesda be like, yeah, we'll keep them on board just because they do good work apart from that. It's like, no, yeah. you've really fucked us. Well, this, this is, you know, this is case. serious. I mean, if Wizards were, if they, if this product had got to launch and this was being sold, if Wizards then, this could have been a serious lawsuit. We're talking like two big companies oh, when yeah. it clashes, you know, it, it could have been a, a lot of money. It could have been a lot of jobs lost. So, you know, I, again, we're not legal. We're not, I'm not trying to insinuate anything here, but at the end of the day, plagiarism is a serious thing you cannot take somebody's work and sell it as your own now it's very interesting that we say this because there's a lot of 
there's a lot of um you know talk and controversy at the moment about things like article 13 with copyright you know with youtubers getting hit with copyright strikes because they use three seconds of music and you know we're, we're having to live in this world now where it's like we said before we made a joke you know you can't even hum a song on youtube anymore but we're having to li live with this world like bethesda should be living with this world too yeah. and uh plagiarism is is a completely different in my opinion it's a completely different topic to to inspiration or using a little bit of copyrighted material in a you know in a fair use way you know if you're if you're if you're reviewing a game and you show some footage because you're reviewing it that's an entirely different thing than me you know trying like if, if i was to take your files of a game like fallout 76 i don't know why i choose that one but if i was to take that game slap some different skins on it and sell it you'd have me in court in a heartbeat so you know it's um it's a very interesting topic. I feel like at this point in time, Bethesda needs to be very careful because they need to be clawing some customer goodwill back. And I think that Rage potentially might get some cost if it's good. If you, it's good. You just caught me on that one because I was going to say, do you think it's going to impact? Someone on my Discord was like, not buying Rage anymore. Although I found it hilarious. He was like, not buying Rage anymore. And it's like, yeah, but you're a big Borderlands 3 fan. It's like, yeah. It's like, so the controversy on that doesn't bother you. That yeah. does. I mean, a lot of people that say like, oh, I'm boycotting a game because of such controversy. A lot of people that do that, like, I think they're in the minority and I think a lot of people do it because, you know, th like, they yeah. weren't going to buy the game anyway, you know, the like. The thing that, like, enrages me is like, I'm not going to buy it and it's like, but you still pre-order. It's like, there's a big, big thing with pre-order culture. You're going to boycott it because they're a little bit of naughty with the plagiarism and it's not them making the game, but yeah. you still pre-order stuff and that doesn't yeah. bother you. Like, what is wrong with you? I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna, like, say, like, if you really don't like a company, like, I really don't like Blizzard anymore, um, you know, and so I'm very critical and whenever they're doing anything, any, anytime Blizzard brings out a new skin or cosmetic or if they talk about new games, I'm like, mm, what are you doing now, Blizzard? So, like, I'm not gonna begrudge somebody, like, at the end of the day, as a consumer, you can buy whatever you want, you don't have to buy anything, you can buy what you want, if you don't like a company and that means you don't want to buy, then don't buy. But, you know, we're coming in from streamers as well, we're streamers and YouTubers where, like we kind of we view games differently like i look at games objectively and i try to you know I, I will report on game news but i try and look at a game from a critical standpoint and so if i think a game is good even if the company's really bad like blizzard i will still tell you that the game is good because i try and be objective and so i look at games very differently like i'm gonna buy rage 2 for two reasons one because i think it looks good and two because if it isn't good i want to tell my my audience my community hey guys this game ain't good, you know, and if it is good, again, same, I would say, look, this game is good, because that's what I care about, I care about, you know, people not being conned into, into buying bad games, <laughs> like Colonel Marines, so that's what I look at, I look at them very objectively, but not everybody does, you know, some people have emotional investments into, into the companies that they buy from, and I get that, which is why I never get angry at people who are boycotting Epic, even though, again, I don't, I'm not going to get angry at people who are boycotting Epic, because they, they, you know, they stand against it, so you're right as a consumer, um, I definitely agree with that i think that's a, a really bad point like people obviously get invested in these companies they support them or not and i'll always let some people get on with it and i always kind of feel bad how i mean I'll, i'm not gonna boycott anything because just because to use an example here borderlands 3 randy pitchford done some naughty things yeah but somebody allegedly oh, i say some <laughs> allegedly, allegedly naughty things yeah um a thousand people have still busted their ass making a yeah. stick game and yeah. with stuff like crunch time now where people are working like a hundred hour week yeah I, i'm i struggle working eight hours <laughs> yeah like 100 hour work week. I'm scared so i'm still gonna buy that because somebody's blood sweat and tears went into that and if it's a good game yeah. right Just it's because it's got a company who's a bit of a dick it's a really interesting point though because in this era of live services which i really don't like it's it's absolutely you know you're not wrong even games like fallout 76 that were trash you know that were really bad broken buggy the bu buggy boogie whatever they are they are like you you're right you know a lot of work from from very talented people went into those games and sometimes all it takes is one person at the top to be like no change this do this yeah. add more add more microtransactions in because that's what makes us the money and that can ruin happens. the whole thing you know and so it's like i absolutely agree with you like i i when i shit on games and sometimes i do shit on games you know like again alien clone marines i will shit on that game for the rest of the time i do feel really bad for the people that work super hard on it but at the end of the day, you know, you're paying £50, $60 for a game. You expect some standards. And if the game is trash, the game is trash. And, you know, it is hard. It is hard as a reviewer, as a critic, as a, a streamer for you to say, you know, that this game is trash because you're right. A lot of people worked really hard on it. But at the end of the day, 
especially these big companies, these big AAA companies, they have the talent, they have the money, they have the resources, they should be putting out good games. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts on the very, very clear plagiarism of Bethesda? Uh, don't steal shit. Yeah, don't steal <laughs> shit. It's as simple as that. Don't steal it. That's really all I have to say about yeah. it. Just don't don't. Be original. <laughs> yeah, be original. You can take inspiration. There's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from stuff. I mean, uh, Lorelei is a great example of that, the game that I've been playing this week. That, like, for me, had some clear inspirations from Coraline, which is a, a, a movie. And, mm-hmm. you know, even sound similar. Coraline, Lorelei, uh, Lorelei, Coraline. <laughs> they sound a bit similar, right? But it's, uh, again, inspiration is fine, but plagiarism is not. And if you don't know what plagiarism is, go Google it. It's it's really not that difficult to comprehend. If you take somebody's work and you change little bits, you're stealing. If you look at a piece of work and go, I think that's great. I'm going to take some inspiration from that. That's fine. You know, there is a fine line sometimes. But just don't <laughs> steal shit. Bethesda have been writing amazing stories for 20 plus years. And then this time they just went, oh, it's just a tabletop RPG. They, they clear like it might be exactly what i said like some dude was in a left an office and they went can you just write up like uh just like an abstract for this thing and like write up some um like some scenarios and some gameplay stuff and the guy just went ah oh! and then he just went and found something and he just whacked it into a file and just went changed some words and kind of went cool <laughs> i'm gonna send this off to my manager he'll never know it legitimately yeah. sounds like an intern move yeah <laughs> like an yeah. intern was in the office everyone else was out having beers sending him pictures he stuck there late at night and he's like ah fuck it this will do well, the problem with that though is if, if you're that person who does that and you get caught that you're never going to get hired again so you know nah. it, it's not worth it it's not worth it don't do it if, if you're not up for the task just say look i'm not up for the task if you've got if you've got nothing just say you've got nothing like don't call it darwinism i guess which, yeah <laughs> yeah maybe that much of a fucking idiot man well, shame on you 100 oh, yeah, we're gonna 100%. we're gonna miss out on this one writer who's too lazy to actually write stuff like what are we gonna do yeah, clearly yeah. we want him on our team exactly uh so moving on to the next topic this is my favorite topic i've been itching to talk about this one because oh, it involves boxes. loot boxes buckle up everybody buckle <laughs> for a ride buckle up bucko because i'm talking about loot boxes and anybody who has followed me at all in this last year or so will know my stance on loot boxes spoiler if you don't i don't fucking the like devil. them um they are the devil Loot boxes the devil, so loot boxes are in the new in the news in the media again because a u.s senator has proposed a ban um who's this u.s senator what's his Man. name i keep forgetting his name uh josh hawley a republican senator has proposed that loot boxes should be banned and it's not just that they should be banned in entirety uh he suggests that these loot boxes are being sold to children and he brings up examples of the games like candy crush that are super bright and colorful and very accessible to children and he says that these essentially constitute gambling and that you are pushing gambling on children and that that is not okay and so his bill would the proposed bill so it's not something that's definitely going to happen it's a bill that's been proposed so this has is going to get voted on it's going to get you know it might not go through it might go through who knows yet but the fact that it's been proposed is 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 big it's significant but if this bill does go through it would mean that these microtransactions are heavily scrutinized and if your game is intended to be played by children they would not be able to feature as he calls them loot boxes or pay to win mechanics so what do you guys think about this because this is there's a lot to unpack here there's a lot of um connotations on this one but what do you guys think are we let's before we go into the topic what do you guys think of loot boxes do you like them do you hate them like where do you stand on it twisty love a good loot box Fuck. so you hate them uh oh. i think i think it has some problems and needs some regulating definitely but i don't think they need to disappear altogether so we all we're all apart from elliot who's joking um we all agree that they're a problem right so i i I also stand on the fact that i don't think necessarily they have to be banned because at the end of the day go they need to go let me finish let me finish i hate them right i hate loot boxes and i and i personally the reason why i hate them is because they are addictive and not only they're addictive they are designed to to get you buying them in large quantities it's not like you know they are designed to get you essentially addicted to them, and that's what gambling does. It's like, okay, well, well, they sorry, they use like similar psychological like uh, 
grabs that bring you in like gambling they use the exact same ones and this has been proven i mean i again i have a psychology degree so i've done a little bit of of psych marketing and in psychology marketing they are finding ways to get you to spend more money and some of them are very manipulative and Mm -hmm. this is one of them it is they give you one for free just like you know just like drug peddlers give you a sample to get you addicted and then you come back and buy more that's it's exactly the same thing they give you a loot box and then they're like hey hey come back tomorrow and you'll get another one and hey come back tomorrow you'll get another one and before you know it you're spending 50 quid a day on these addictive loot boxes and they are designed to be you know fun and flashy and um, but the problem with them is is in the majority of loot box cases, the chances of getting the item that you want, because most loot boxes have rarities. And, you know, depending on the game, it could be a legendary or a super rare or an ultra rare or whatever. Some of them, the the drop chances are so ridiculously low. We're talking 0.01% or lower in some cases. Um, In fact, we had a recent, not that long ago, we had the uh, streaming incident where a bunch of streamers streamed FIFA packs and they were opening FIFA packs and not one of them got, I think they opened hundreds combined, not one of them got a golden player. And so these things are designed to trick you out of your money. You know, you want that thing, you probably won't get that thing. So you keep spending, keep spending, hoping you're going to get that thing and you might get it, you probably won't. And this is why I don't like them. But at the same time, just like we have gambling, you know, gambling is heavily regulated in both the UK and the US. Just like we have gambling, some people like doing that. They enjoy it and they're prepared to spend money on it. My issue though is with loot boxes, they are in games, they are unregulated, and they are in games that children have free access to. We're talking FIFA, Overwatch, you know, many, many games, Candy Crush, many games have these loot boxes. And this is why I fundamentally stand against them because they aren't, you know, it's not like, oh, well, okay, I'm an adult. I can make my own mind up. You're talking children who, you know, parents don't even know that these games contain gambling. So we're all pretty much on the same page that there needs to be, you know, Twisty thinks they should be removed, but we all agree that there needs to be something done, right? None of us think that they're fine. I think the way that they get around like loot boxes as not being gambling in some countries is that you are paying money and you are receiving something for your money. Like they'll set out a set amount of items just because it's not the item that you're hoping that it's going to be. You're still receiving something and you can't redeem that for any monetary value. Yes. So so I would argue that point a little bit. So uh, take Apex Legends. Rarest item is um, a a knife for Wraith, I think it is. If you get that, you can then sell that account quite a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And which we've had that with we've though. had that with Counter Strike. We've had items that have been yeah. sold for real money. Um, but I mean that's that's an added problem with with this this problem. But like even if you take that away, even if you say right, you can never sell this. You sell your account, you're banned. Even though the my point is is that you want something, right? As a customer, you see that flashy skin, or you see that weapon skin, or you see that weapon or whatever that emote that you want. You see that, and you want it. And you can't just get it. You can't just hand over money and get it. You have to gamble on the fact of getting it. And a lot of these loot boxes have absolute trash in them. I mean, let's just take Overwatch because this is the game I'm most familiar with when it comes to loot boxes. Overwatch has so much filler bullshit in their loot boxes. It's like, oh, here's a spray that's a triangle. It's like, yeah, great. I really want that triangle fucking spray. Or here's a voice line and it's literally just like, I don't know, it's just Tracer going, hello and that's it and i'm like i like i didn't want that i wanted the but skin as an adult aren't you rational enough to know that that's gonna happen to you if you're spending your money that way absolutely no. but my point <laughs> is is if i want that skin i can't buy it i have to gamble to get it so if i see a tracer skin i go oh i love that skin right i cannot buy that skin i have to go for a, a gambling mechanic and gamble on it and this is my you problem know that this is like you're an adult and you know like this might not happen for me like, this is the opportunity, this is what I'm going to have to maybe spend to, for that to happen. And you yeah, know what, I can sure. live without something like that sure. if so I don't want to risk it. That's that's fine for people like ourselves who don't have gambling problems or yeah. don't have addictive personalities. It's fine. We're rational people and we can turn around and say, well, I don't want that. Because I can't buy outright. So I, I, within myself, I am stable and mentally healthy enough to be able to go like, no, yeah, fine. But there are people who are like, oh, well, I'll just buy one. Oh, I didn't get it. But I mean, you have that with gambling, and gambling's legal. But this is a thing. So, legal, so but actually, highly regulated. Gambling yeah, is regulated, is. and you have to go to specific places for gambling. Yeah. Why is it that I'm just doing my past playing a video game? Why is it it's got to be so insidious that it's trying to get me just playing a game with my friends? Yeah. And it's not even that you can like necessarily just ignore them either. People say, oh, just ignore them. Don't buy them. With, again, taking Overwatch as a good example, 
fuck you blizzard um <laughs> you get free ones for gameplay and once you have them it is up in shiny golden glittering writing on your screen yeah. i've currently got 63 loot boxes on overwatch that i refuse to open i actually might open them on a live stream to prove a fucking point right because i've earned 63 <laughs> I would like, love it if you did that and just got like legend and then just got <laughs> yeah probably yeah. blizzard blizzard oh, blizzard tweak it to be like we're gonna show him um but no i i have them and it, every time i load up that game in bright golden writing it's like 63 loot boxes open them now and of course if you click on the loot box to go and open them right there in big golden shiny writing it's store buy more and you know it's like i i 100 agree with twisty it's this insidious it's very insidious because if you're gonna sell a skin right you sell a skin and you're like hey this is the skin and we worked really hard on this skin and it looks beautiful I mean, because there are some amazing skins in overwatch that i really like you know um so if you sell the skin and you go we work really hard on it we think this skin is worth ten dollars or ten pounds right i can then choose as an adult to go hey i think it's worth ten pounds i have ten pounds i'll buy it or i can't afford ten pounds or i don't like the skin enough i don't think it's worth it i won't buy it that's a nice good business transaction if i like that skin and i have to go through loot boxes already just by opening two three five you're starting to build that addiction potentially might not happen to you but you're potentially building that addiction and the way that it works i'm not going to get into the psychology of it but essentially you know behaviorism is a real strong uh, field in psychology it's kind of an older field in psychology but it's still very relevant today if you reward somebody for something over long enough time you, know, you will form a habit if you go hey i really liked you did this thing here's a piece of candy here's a piece of chocolate and that person goes i really like that chocolate i'm gonna do it again over enough time that person will continue to do that behavior well, it's, it's the rat in the cage box uh, the rat in the maze. If souls of maze gets a bit of candy, put them back in the maze. If souls of maze get a bit of candy. The worst part <laughs> is that 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 irks me. Overwatch is free. Overwatch you have to yeah. pay for, and then you don't get yeah. free. Now imagine you people who make all the ch ch shite in the box. They're yeah. they're working hard for doing that. Imagine you get rid of the guff. They just make stuff like League of Legends. Always have generally really good skin. That mm -hmm. particle effects. Don't loot boxes. If you want it. You buy it that's yeah. it a league of legends hand over fist makes money of more money than overwatch does. yeah and it's a free well, game you this is get it this is the eternal argument because you know a lot of people some people don't give a crap about microtransactions like whatever i buy them i don't care some people really hate them and i'm like always in the middle i really don't mind microtransactions again we bring up dead by daylight i have bought skins in dead by daylight because i go hey look i like that skin so i bought it so i have paid more money to dead by daylight so i can get you know the thing that i want and with dead by daylight it's a cheaper game to start with it's quite relatively cheap so i didn't mind spending a little bit more money but you're absolutely right a lot of these games you know even in a free-to-play game and by the way i'm not gonna rec i'm not gonna be okay with loot boxes but the problem is is that it's like not only is it just saying hey here's some microtransactions for you to spend it's saying you know we want you spending more every day every week all the time spend 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 and what are you really getting out of it you're getting cosmetics now a lot of people go, well, it's fine then, just don't buy the cosmetics. But I enjoy cosmetics. I always have done. I really enjoy it. It's one of the big reasons why I played WoW for so long was because I really enjoyed getting the different transmogs and the different mounts, which mounts at the end of the day in WoW are just skins, essentially. So I really like that. I like flying around. Well, I used to when, before I quit. I used to like flying around, you know, World of Warcraft on my Frostbrood Vanquisher. I used to like doing that shit because I like the cosmetic aspect of games. And you used to be able to unlock this shit, but now you have to pay for it. But not only do you have to pay for it, you have to essentially gamble on it. And so going back to the original point, Belgium have already outlawed these. Belgium have already outlawed loot boxes. And what, and I think really, the Netherlands has too. Yeah, I think the Netherlands have too. There's a couple of countries now. China, I know in China, they're not, out, they're not completely outlawed, but they've got, they've got stricter laws in China. You've there's got to show the percentages. Count. Yeah, I think there's a daily cap. You have to show the percentages, which I think... Yeah. So I think they all should. I think they all should. Yeah. In England, if you buy a scratch card, it has to say your odds of winning. Like fruit machines have to say the yeah. jackpot price from this is a 0.0005% yeah. chance of winning. And I think like that would be a good middle ground for loot boxes. But like at the moment, with there just being no regulations, like more and more of like the world's governments are looking at it and being like, mm, this is predatory. Mm -hmm. Like, so there's which it is. Yeah, there's two or three countries. But I mean, like, are... the entire capitalist economy is predatory. Like, that you're going out into the world. Yeah, but that doesn't ad, make it okay. All you look at is telling you what to buy. Like, you have to learn in the world that we live in. You have to learn how to navigate that and decide okay. whether or not... Okay, okay. My, my counterpoint to that is, 
imagine if a game, if you bought a game um, in a physical disc, right? Imagine if you opened up that physical disc and it came with a little packet of drugs. Would you be like, oh, well, you know, it's fine. It's an 18 rated game. It's fine. It's got drugs <laughs> so in we, it. We, we no. just went from shopping this, to drugs. Got, so let's maybe maybe a better a example would be if you went to uh, a convenience store and you were like, right, I want a bottle of Gatorade. They're like, no, you can't have that. Like, well, you don't have it. What you got to do is spin this wheel and it might land on Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. but it might, might also be water. dog piss. Yeah, but I feel like then, <laughs> maybe Gatorade. But then yeah. maybe I go, I don't want Gatorade because I might not be able to buy that with my money. And that's the thought process. But, but so why, now why imagine that not, person. Why, why can you not just remove the wheel and go, Here's yeah. a bottle of Gatorade. Here's two dollars. Now imagine every time you walk into that store to go and get your bread or your milk, somebody goes, "Buy your Gatorade! Buy your Gatorade!" They walk <laughs> behind you and they go, "Gatorade's on special offer today. Two spins for the price of one." All the whole time you're walking around the shop. Because again, that if you're gonna go with the analogy, that's what they do every time you log in. Most of these games, it pops up. Loot boxes. Buy the loot boxes. Oh, but by the way, did you know? You turn. Yeah. Marketing not when I'm not when I'm sat in a, a, a video game lobby for a game that I bought think... though. Do you not think that's wrong, though, that they're marketing but that? I think that's the world that we live in. And then instead of looking at it as if it's right or wrong, you should look at how do I learn myself and teach my kids how to navigate a world that's like that? Because you so, can't change the world. You can change I, yourself. I you can change the world, such, though. So I think there was such we an important can. point just there. Teach <laughs> your kids. Yeah. yeah. So people yeah. are like, oh, my kids did it. It's like, well, you're the fuck up, not your kids. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. But the problem is, is that a lot of these games, people don't even understand. Like, parents don't understand because FIFA, FIFA yeah. has been a game that has been around forever. Like, FIFA was around when I was a kid, right? FIFA has come out every single year since I was a kid. And most people let their kids play FIFA because it usually has a U rating or, a, or an everybody rating or a, a no age required rating. And it still does, by the way. Still yeah. does. So this game is marketed for children. It's like, hey, you know, anyone can play FIFA because it's a game about football. There's no violence. There's no sex. There's no drugs. There's no nothing. Anyone can play it. But by the way, it's got some predatory gambling in there. Snuck in there because that's so, what it is. So for stuff like that, do you have to link a credit card to that? And can a kid get a credit card? Well, I think it goes well you can. Oh, here's the thing, though. You, you do and you don't. So you, if you want to buy them directly, yeah. But every single console has ways of getting money that, you know, you can get, um, you can go to a store and you can buy like a five pound worth of credit. So you can go to a store, buy five pound worth of credit, come home, scratch the number off and put it into your Xbox or PlayStation and you can buy it that way. So you don't necessarily have to have a credit card. Okay. So, but, sorry. I just was curious. <laughs> um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the uh, devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the one thing I was going to say, and a counterpoint to that, where it's like, yeah, but so I've worked in, in games retail before. The amount mm. of parents who are like, I've bought GTA for my seven year old kid, and like, well, then, you... and they don't care. It's just like, no. oh, I could yeah. put them in front of the TV yeah. and it'll shut up. 100%. Yeah, you're not wrong. Like, well, then you can't blame the industry that wants to make money. It's a business, them being predatory because let it be. Let yeah. it be that. And it's that yeah. thing where it's like, ah, oh, but we. We just have to take for granted that this is how the games industry is going to be. Like, no, no, we, we shouldn't. We shouldn't allow that. Yeah, there are a lot of people who don't like it. Now, to be clear, I'm fine with microtransactions. You want to sell me a pretty skin? If it's pretty enough, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. So if you want to sell me a chance to win a pretty skin, I'll be like, no. Yeah. Because I want that item. Therefore, I'm going to give you money, and you're going to give me the item. Yeah. Not give me a chance to get that item. That's that little bit there. You get a chance to get the item you want. That's the bit where it becomes yeah. bullshit. Exactly, that exactly. I have no problem with the game selling skins. I mean, I would always say, like, I would prefer to be able to unlock the skins in the game. That's the way that I would prefer it. I think it's more enjoyable. I think it gives you more value for your game. But yeah, especially in these online games, you know, I will, I will be fair... Games like Overwatch, you know, you say that you have to buy it. Sure, I bought it years ago and they're still updating it. They're adding new characters, new maps. So that costs money. That costs, you know, they've got to hire developers. They've got to... I, I understand that, that there's no point in them to keep doing that if they're not still making money. And the way that they make their money long term is on microtransactions. I have no problem with that. And again, if Overwatch sells skins... In fact, the one time they did sell a skin... Uh, when they sold the Pink Mercy skin, although that was a charity thing, it was for charity. Um, I still bought it. I really like the Pink Mercy skin. So I paid for it and bought it and I got it and I enjoy it. And I, every time I play Mercy, I equip that skin because it's my favorite one. So well, I have no problem with that. So games have done this for years, though, and it was called DLC, in which they may pay, they'd like they released a game where you bought it. It was great. And then they were like, shit, we need more money. Let's make yeah. some DLC for it. So we bought the DLC. This yeah. 
but I mean, no even Xbox. even The Witcher uh, Three, The Witcher Three did that, where The Witcher Three had an amazing, amazing game, but because it was so good, they were like, "Hey, do you want some more? Well, here's some look more." Look how much money it made. That's the worst. Yeah. They want. They want the money, yeah. and look how much money it made. God of yeah. War is one of the best games that's currently available, and they haven't done any DLC for it. Why? Yeah. Because it made fuck tons of money. Yeah. Just by being a good game. Yeah. Fuck this stuff where I have to buy loot boxes and you have to be a predator to get your money. Just make a fucking good game. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. We'll, we'll take it yeah. back to that point. You know, if you if you want to have microtransactions in a game, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's that loot boxes are tying that mon- monetization to gambling, and that's where it's a problem. You know, because at the end of the day, if I look at a game and I go, do you know what? Too many microtransactions. I don't want to buy it. Fine. But these often, like, it's not even that they're always just there at the beginning either. Like, this has been snuck in. I know Black Ops didn't have them in at launch, so they would get better reviews and then snuck them in later and was like, nobody's talking about our game anymore. Let's throw in the microtransactions. Um, but it's it's interesting because I don't necessarily want US senators poking around in video games. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest on this point. Like, I don't necessarily want these people getting involved because quite often no offense to u.s senators but quite often politicians don't really know much about video games you know so i don't really want them poking around but we warned the industry i've been talking about this for years now you know and people like jim sterling have been making videos on this for years jim sterling said years ago you know that if they carried on like this it would draw the attention of lawmakers and guess what it's drawn the attention of lawmakers and we don't know you know they could come in now and go yeah loot box is banned great but then what about next year are they then going to be like hey guess what violence in video games banned because guess what dead by daylight would have to go you know call of duty would have to go so this is why i really don't want these people getting involved but at the same time i'm like you kind of brought it upon yourselves we told you and you didn't stop so yeah, it's a real possibility. US, US, the land of hope and free, you know, the capitalist <laughs> center of the world might actually f- see some regulations. Does anyone actually disagree that we need this? Does anyone actually disagree that we need a little bit of regulation on loot boxes? Are we all... I mean, I, I mean... disagree, but I think it's just like, all they need to do is categorize loot boxes as gambling and then use the existing gambling regulations that we yeah. have and that work. How would you do uh, that in a in a game though? Like, I understand if you're doing it at a casino, you know, like if a 12 year old comes to the casino, it's like, hello, I want to do some gambling today. You'd be like, get out of here, Johnny. You're not allowed in. You're like, how would you do that? 12 year old, I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, like, so much with like, so obviously like an age restriction, like, so you just make it so that if you have gambling in your game, your game becomes an 18, which like yeah. we've obviously discussed, like parents can still buy the game for their children. Yeah, which then, is, you know, that's their parenting choice. That's yeah, up to exactly. Them. At that point, you're, the parent is now responsible for the fact that their child is gambling. Um, yeah. But like there will be parents out there who, if their kid like goes, oh yeah, I want to go to the game shop and I want to buy FIFA now. And like, imagine if they made FIFA 18. Yeah. Like there are going to be parents out there who will be like, whoa, little Timmy, you can't have FIFA. It's an 18 and you're only yeah. four well um, legally games fall under the same rules as alcohol as uh, as movies if you're caught selling in the uk if you're caught selling an 18 rated game to an uh, to a minor you can lose your job you can get fined and potentially you can go to prison the problem is is that where in england they're super strict on alcohol they do spot checks all the time they will send i used to work in a bar many many years ago and they will they will send spot checks they'll send underage people in to buy alcohol from you and if you serve them they come in with a big fine going bush there you go yeah. um and it's and super strict but, to sell it yeah or... but video games don't seem to be as strictly monitored as alcohol and even movies seem to be more strictly monitored than video games and i think it's probably just a symptom that video games are still relatively new you know i mean so, it, it's Brick and mortar stores are still quite regulated. You do have city shoppers and everything, but bear in mind, brick and mortar stores aren't distributed these days. Yeah, yeah. exactly. People download the they, they download them now, and uh, right. especially with the Xbox One, they've just announced a new Xbox One version that has no disc drive, which they tried to do at the beginning of the Xbox One's life cycle, but they finally done it. They've just released, or they, they're going to release an Xbox One. Is it the Xbox One S? I think with okay. no disc drive. So if you're that person who buys that console, don't do it. You have to download your games. So you can't even buy them at brick and mortar store. So, so. you then even get even more parents and guardians who ha- who play the ignorance bliss card because it's like they don't have that salesperson who goes, "Are you sure? Yeah, want to you want to get this game for your kid?" 
So they don't have a, that guardian. So from my understanding, like when I have like my PlayStation account, like my credit card is linked to that. Yeah. So now you can have an opportunity for like parent advisory on that on purchases, like you would have on an iPhone, yeah. like with like Apple. Well, I'm, I know that PlayStation but, has it. I don't like, know so much about the Xbox, but there is a system in place where um, you can basically set it up so that you have a child account that can't buy things without like a password yeah. or something. Yeah, the problem yeah. with this is, is most parents, parents don't have yeah. that knowledge. And you're absolutely right, Taylor. You're absolutely right. It is parents' responsibility. And I think parents need to take more responsibility of what they, you know, do or don't let their children do. But like, for, I'll just give you a good example of what happened to my family. My nephew actually took my uh, sister's credit card out of her purse, went straight to the Xbox, just dumped the number in, put the number in on the back, boom, you went and spent a fortune on, uh, I think it was Fortnite skins or FIFA packs, one of the two. Um, and it was that easy. It was that easy. Now, absolutely, that was a, you know, like he was to blame for that. But my point is, is that it's not that difficult for a savvy kid to be like, hey, mom, you know, I just want 10 pounds, please. But I don't like... think that's the responsibility of the game provider. No, I it's not. It's absolutely not. Issue. But my not. point is, is that it still happens. And we know this, and the games industry know this. They know that kids are you know buying loot boxes in FIFA, you know fifa packs in fifa they know that it's happening yet they don't seem to want to do anything about it and like like we said before like about saying like a candy store that ships stuff online like they take an online credit card so your kid steals the credit card and puts it in there how is that any different no yeah absolutely it's not it's not but at the same time when we're talking about things like gambling mechanics of loot boxes you know how can fifa if it's sold to everybody with no age restriction, no age rating. If a kid goes to her parent, like their parents, and be like, "Hey, can I have ten pounds for my new FIFA game? I need some new DLC." And they're like, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." Now they've just tied their credit cards to it. Boom! That kid's now spending money on gambling. So, I do feel we are going perhaps a bit round a bit of a circle around here, where yeah. I, I get like it's so it's it's not FIFA's responsibility to police that. It should be the parents' responsibility to police that. 100%. Now there does become a little bit where it's like, yes, but if you are making it readily available everybody you you have to take a little bit of the oh, there's a term for it and it's like i think it is like burden of responsibility yeah it should ownership. all be uh, yeah some ownership before you yeah. is the fact that you are still putting that gambling machine within reach of the child yeah and you must admit there's probably like probably gonna sound perhaps a little bit tinfoil hey but there probably is some insidiousness within those businesses like oh if we no, don't no. educate it kids are gonna use it that money first yeah and then they can turn around like they did with their kardashians i think when it happened to them and they were like we're not gonna do that you gave it to us fair and square yeah, yeah. And, and like i think there needs to be 100 percent if you're going to split it into percentage responsible parents take the majority stake yeah. in that responsibility i but agree at, at some point you need to put at least law or legislate legislation where it goes hang on it shouldn't be so fucking easy for this 10 yeah. year old kid to be able to do it yeah, like a ten-year-old exactly. kid can't work, can't walk into a, can't walk into actual monetary, uh, monetary gambling situation. Why should they have the same sort of situation? But yeah. then the reason why that hasn't happened is because, uh, yes, I can't what it is. Uh, CSRB. The, something like that, I think. Yeah, it's uh, CSRB. They're, they're, they're not going to see it as gambling because of what you stated earlier. So the only reason, the o- this, this, this is this has been confirmed. The only reason it's not technically gambling according to the esrb is because you can't cash out for money that's the yeah. only reason even I think though it's also because you uh like never walk away with nothing too because like yeah. you always you always yeah. end up with like even if it's something that's crap and you don't yeah. want which in my my argument it, it, it's it's theoretically nothing you know it's not what you wanted it's it's crap yeah but um, like it's still you're still paying money to end up with an item yeah. and yeah. there's a which, transaction there it's not something that we haven't we haven't nothing. touched on is like you know we're, we're talking about that this isn't cast as gambling because you can't get any physical money out of it but like at the end of the day just think about that for a second right like without broader context just think about that we're talking about gambling mechanics and stuff for digital items zeros and ones essentially that's all it is you don't it doesn't exist and by the way these can be taken away from you at any time if you doesn't matter how many thousands of dollars you spent on overwatch if you get banned tough shit you've lost all of that these are things that could be taken away at any time they are they don't actually exist and yet we're talking about them in terms of people are forming addictions you know it, look it's at the real world we live in though dude like that's yeah. that's how life is these days. it's 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 the reason why people go hard for dark souls like they're gonna turn around and go i have the accolade of, of doing it like yeah it, it's not it's like you have a, a trophy but do you? i still did it yeah and and in this day and age especially in circles that we run in where it's a lot more prevalent it's it's that being hold up where look at this skin that i've got 
It's limited edition. I yeah. spent 200 pounds to get this, but I've got it. Massive debt now. And it's like, <laughs> you still have that accolade of the fact that you've got that thing that you can show off. Yeah. And, and we see it a lot. Look at DS Go. Christ, a knife skin yeah. is going for like five grand. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Knife, it's crazy. That's the world we live in. Absolutely. Which again, just proves the point where people say it's just more cosmetic. No one cares about cosmetics. Proves the point they do. You know, people are willing to spend fortunes on these skins because they love them. I mean, I'm one of them. I love cosmetics. You know, I like making my character yeah. look awesome and look cool. And I have so many skins on League of Legends. <laughs> but again, but again, if you have that money and you want to buy it, like that's what I'm saying. I will never like say somebody's wrong for buying skins because if you want that skin, you want to buy it. Go ahead. You know, like if that brings you enjoyment, then do it. But that's what I'm saying. Like me, for me, if we're talking adults and we're talking, you know, adult decisions, can I afford this $10? That's fine. But when we're talking children, impressionable children, we're talking children who don't have that. Because this is true, you know, children don't have that same level of, I can't afford this or I don't need this. They don't have that same level of uh, control that adults do. And I think that if you're, if, you know, if you are a child and you're already starting to be, uh, you know, if you're starting to be exposed to this gambling thing, this could real have real consequences on your life. And this is why this bill, you know, is kind of targeted at children. Um, it's not, it's not saying that blue boxes need to be banned completely. It's saying that games that are marketed for children, games that are aimed towards children should be, um, you know, regulated. And I think that's a good starting point. I think that's a good place to start. I, I do find it quite funny how they're like talking about Candy Crush. I know no child that plays Candy Crush. The only people I know who play Candy Crush are middle-aged women. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I, I used to play it for fun, but like, I'm not a middle-aged woman. But no, most kids are playing Fortnite these days. And, you know, Fortnite is, uh, Fortnite used to have loot boxes. They used to have the llamas. They took them out. Now they only have direct purchases. And I will say that the Fortnite skins, in my honest opinion, are grossly overpriced. Do they um, not still have llamas in single player mode? I'm not sure I about never, the single player mode. I never mode. remember llamas being in the multiplayer mode. I always thought they were in the save the world mode. Not I'm not sure because I, I don't really play Fortnite. I've only started playing it recently. And honestly, right, that was because my nephews forced me to. Um, I, I, would put, I would give you my opinion on Fortnite, but I think that would make me hated. Oh, it's fine. It's yeah. Um, any any yeah, children? Any children? Like. Yeah, it's very very true. Any children watching are like, what is that about my Fortnite? Um, but no, I think I think you know this whole topic is something that it's only going to get worse for the industry. And uh, you know they could have avoided this if they had just been a bit more sensible in the first place. If they'd have gone, look, there's a problem here. You know, there's a potential for people to to get addicted. There's a potential for people to be harmed. You know, we need to take a little bit of ownership. Again, I 100 percent agree parents absolutely do need to take ownership of what they are letting their children do i mean we've said this a million times you know pe a lot of parents i feel like they're happy as long as their kids in front of the tv and they're shush you know as long as they're quiet and they're playing games they don't really care what's going on um you know i mean i i know even for me when i was a kid i used to play games that were you know like 18 rated when i was in my teens and my parents didn't know they didn't care they were, they were whatever they're like you, you enjoy your game you know so i understand it but at the same time, I'm kind of happy that we're seeing some changes, but I'm also not happy that it has to be the government that's stepping in. But hey ho, we warned them. But does anyone else have anything to talk about the loot boxes? Any more opinions we want to talk about before we uh, start to wrap up? I was just taking my position for the purpose of discussion. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So Taylor <laughs> likes to, uh, yeah, like, likes to be a bit contrary. Loot boxes. Quickly, no. clean those hands. <laughs> no again you can you if you love loot boxes go ahead buy them you know just just acknowledge that they are harmful and again they're taking items that you used to be able to unlock with gameplay and hiding mm -hmm. them behind gambling mechanics it's not so, it's not a positive thing in my opinion i definitely think the points that you raise make for an interesting discussion see that it's not just black and white mm. it, it does it, it, it it's always an interesting topic at the box yeah it does 100 mm -hmm. because the, like the, the one question it raises and it's probably too big for, for the rest of the podcast but Wrapping up, but if they were to go away, what would be the revenue stream play company place it? Do well, again, just good direct... games instead. Well, or... yeah, okay, but could you yeah. could you imagine that? I know what a radical yeah. idea. Yeah. You could make good games and sell loads of copies. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> good games. <laughs> I'm gonna call it now. I reckon in 2020 we're gonna see unionization of the games industry. We're gonna see games industry pro game prep. Game prices rise by around ten pounds or sort of ten dollars or so, and we're going to see single player game take off. 
as a hundred well, percent what I reckon. Do you know what? You say single player games take off again. They never went anywhere. You know, God of War came out this year, Red Dead Redemption until they added the online crap. So it's um, only been this year. Resident Evil 2. Stuff like that. I mean, I think they were always there. I think there's a big difference between the AAA industry so, and the rest of the industry. You know, so the- name me a big single player game in the last three years, not including in twenty nineteen. Name me not one. Twenty nineteen. Like- Holy shit, I let remember me, that. Let me check my Steam boss. library. Let me check my Steam library real quick, because this is how I remember my games. Because the um, only one I can think is Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was fantastic. I will admit oh, that. Uh, I've been having a really hard it? time finding... Horizon Zero Dawn was 2018. Didn't Resident Evil 2 came out in the end of 2018? Nah, Resident Evil was this year, wasn't it? So that 2019. What was the one that came out just before Christmas? There was one I was playing. Um, Horizon's a good shot, actually. Right. Yeah. yeah Do you know what? I don't like Horizon. I cannot get into it. I don't like I've it. I've tried so many times. I bought a PS4 for Horizon, and I regret nothing. See, I bought it for God of War, and I was like, yeah, praise Kratos, like, 100% get behind him. Although, <laughs> you're actually playing one, Elliot, that you mentioned at the start of the uh, podcast. Uh, Sekiro? Doom? Uh, I was oh, going to say Doom. Doom. Sekiro Doom. was this year, dude. Doom, Doom was but 2016. Doom. Yeah, it was earlier than that, I thought. Um, I thought like, Doom was... But Although if you Doom think... has, like, a multiplayer mode, and it's kind of shooter. I mean, admittedly, it has way more of a... Like, it's much more fleshed out as a single-player game than, like, Call of Duty, but... Yeah, Doom, definitely. I'm really enjoying. When was yeah. the Spider-Man game? Spider-Man game this year? Uh, this? I know it's 2018. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 2018. Man, I mean, I, a lot of these come from PlayStation. Uh, when's the last few months to like a much longer time thing? Uncharted, yeah. the Uncharted series, they've been going out for a while. Uh, Last of Us was a couple of years ago. That was, but yeah, it was a few years I, ago now, Last of Us. None, none have really been as heralded as, as the past sort of months that we've had, where like... Yeah. Red Dead, Spider Man, and and God of War have all been like up there. But I think, well, I think mm-hmm. that conversation was um because you remember like maybe a year, two years ago was when all the game journalists were like single players dead, no one's yeah. playing single yeah. player. It's all Which nice again they've world. been saying for years. The industry has been saying this for years. Like no one plays single player games anymore. The the reason why they keep saying this though is because there's there's never been games as massive as games like Fortnite and, and 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 even you know before Fortnite we had Minecraft you know was a good example of that Minecraft was huge until Fortnite killed it um I, di- I didn't say that on the internet uh, but you know what I'm saying like we have these massively multiplayer games that people can play together and they blow up to huge proportions and they overshadow these games and so when we have games that are coming out I know Square Enix like to say quite often that Tomb Raider was a failure and stuff like that you know because they only sold a million copies um it overshadows them and makes them look like they're they're tiny but they're not they're yeah. still being sold to millions think, of people I definitely think to refine my argument a little to refine what, refine what I'm saying we've seen them come out of faster tempo yeah. Whereas before yeah. it was like, you'd get like maybe four beats a year. And now since September, April, seeing like six games come out, all brilliant single player adventures where they're just starting to knock them out of the park now. And yeah. I hope that's the way it goes. But I Cyberpunk, mean, we have it. We look, we have a market for both and not every game has to be a, a smash hit blockbuster success like Fortnite. And I mean, just, just think about that for a second. You bring up a really interesting point that I, I want to give a, a, a credit to is, you know, that like so many games that have tried to be massive multiplayer successes like Fallout 76, you know, The Division, uh, uh, Destiny even. Destiny wasn't as, 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 as a huge smash hit as they thought Anthem. it was going to be. Anthem. Anthem yeah, absolutely. All these games that are desperately trying to be smash it successes aren't but that's that's what we but that's what we need if we want to yeah. see if we want to see loot boxes fritter away and that the game industry starts going actually we want to get rid of these before people start putting the old uh silver handcuffs on us we're yeah. going to need to start seeing this constant churn of games come out where it's like where we were seeing like spider-man god of war days gone caliber games coming out where every time they come out people are like hey this is like a solid seven plus mm-hmm. yeah i am I don't. I don't do scores. Um, I don't find them particularly useful. So just, but yeah, it, it, but it's good. It's, it's well, a well acclaimed games. Yeah, yeah. So it score, scores are good. It's a point of reference, and it, it makes good for this. But for this then sort of the reason why I don't like scores is because things like Days Gone happened, where Days Gone was a perfectly enjoyable game, and people it was getting what like six, five, six, sevens, and people were like, oh, it's terrible because it got a seven. I'm like, what scale yeah. is seven bad? Yeah, people, people need to. <laughs> the thing that I, that always boggles my mind when I review games is when I go, I don't like this, and they're like, you're so it's bad, it's like. No, yeah. I just don't like. It. I don't Good. like chocolate but ice cream. Like that doesn't mean it's bad. 
Wait, I, I, I do I'm like. I, no, 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 no. Are you for real? I, I, okay, look, it's not my favorite flavor. I prefer like. Like, if flavors. you told me this prior to the podcast, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Um, I don't. It's not my favorite flavor, just and so. I've I have had arguments with people over this before. They're like, chocolate is the best flavor ice cream, and like, I just prefer others. Like, I'd pre- I'd uh, prefer salt strawberry. Best. Salt or caramel is the best. Let's be honest. Get yes. Out of the salt caramel. Yes. Yes. I'm a I'm a real pistachio ice cream fan. I don't know why it's like ugh, pistachios pistachio. are deadly for me. I know so you can't have them. <laughs> but does that mean that it's bad? No, it just means that they kill you. It doesn't mean it's a bad flavor, you know. <laughs> uh, bad for you. Uh, but this is what we say, you know, like just because I don't like something doesn't mean it's bad, and just because I do like something doesn't mean it's good, you know. It, it people need. This is why I don't like scores because people need like they get so obsessed with the number. They're like, well, I thought it was a masterpiece, and you only gave it a seven, and it's like, yeah, but. Well, look you know, at um, Jim Sterling with Breath of the Wild. He, yeah, yeah, he, I remember a that. Score on, oh my God, they want to drag him out into yeah. the streets and lynch the poor guy. This is a, another reason why I don't like scoring systems, because in my opinion, if you give a game a 10, in my opinion, that means that it was perfect, can't be improved, and every game can be improved. The Witcher 3 could be improved. I'm sorry, see, it see, could I be. A, I am a big God of War fan. If you say God of War could be improved, I'm like, it could be, It could be improved. Oh, okay. No. I, had, I actually didn't play God of Go War. On. Right? Oh, Give me the option to play as a super sexy female version of God of War. Boom. Improved. <laughs> Goddess of War. <laughs> Goddess of War. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I kind of I think Kratos is a pretty super sexy guy. Like, he's Jack, got the beard going on, kind of can handle his kids and stuff. So it's like, I mean, that's husband material right there. I'm straight. I'm a straight man. <laughs> but... I, I mean, I, can appreciate I just love his them. voice. I love his voice. Like, I just love that, like, boy. It's exactly. just, oh, I'm jealous. So, I'm jealous of his I mean, voice. I don't think you could. I, I see, now we're getting onto another topic where it's yeah. like, does a game improve? You yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Like, in, in my opinion, you could always improve. If you, were to, if you were to take a game and you were to go back and do it again, I'm sure that they would be able to find a way to make it. So yeah. I would, I would frame it this way, where if you ask any artist, every artist will say, yeah, I can improve it. But, uh, there, again, there's another term which escapes me. If you if you get a piece of art and you finish it and then go, nah, I can improve it, nah, I can improve it, nah, I can improve it, then you fucked it. Because you yeah. want to improve it to that point where you've overworked it and it's suddenly a, it's a bag of shit. Yeah. But, well, well, let me just give you an easier example. What if what if they were to take God of War and they were to remake it exactly how it is in five years' time when the graphics have improved? The graphics would be better, therefore the game overall is better. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, even for me, you, graphics are like the least the important. That it is? Yeah. No, but this is what I'm saying. Like, this is why I don't think a ten is like ever really uh, applicable. I can't, I can't, I can't get with that <laughs> argument. I can't get with that argument. I've, I've always had a problem with this whole like never give anything a ten because then if you think a game's perfect, you just give it a nine. So the nine becomes yeah. the new ten because you can never yeah. give it a ten. So then you so, should really never give a nine, and now you have to start giving out eights to every. Yeah, which point. which is then it comes that complex <laughs> thing where it's like, do you give a score? There, there's always, really... Yeah, there's always an upper limit on the score. Like, I don't yeah. think a ten is like it's perfect, but a ten would just be like. Like it is probably like at the moment the best game I've played. Hundred percent. Like, but then the problem, yeah. the problem on sure. top of that though is if you give a game a ten and then you give another game a nine, people go. So you're saying objectively this game is better than that one. But yeah. games on yeah. games on a linear thing. Like one game might be amazingly graphically, but not great. You know, uh, so, story wise. So there's all different assets it, to a game. It doesn't get a ten. Like, but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is why I personally don't like the direct comparison because they're trying to objectify a scale, saying that this game, if it's got a higher number, is better than another one. But there's so much subjectivity <laughs> to video games. Because like you say, they're basically pieces of art, right? They have they have uh, graphics, they have sound, they have gameplay. They have so, so many different things that are kind of artistic that I might view in a different way to you because it's subjective. So that's fine. But that's why if somebody goes to you, you get a different score and me, get a different score and that's why you never depend on one reviewer you watch like six hundred percent seven eight one hundred percent then you just pick the average out of that score and this was you're a really big fan of me at which point you're going to take my score they're (laughs) a big fan of you they're going to take your score but this is the thing i use this is one of the reasons why i was a huge and still am i'm a huge fan of total biscuit was because he like even if i you know didn't necessarily agree with what like like his opinion on a game because i liked it and he didn't or he liked it and i didn't like i knew for a fact that what he was saying was trustworthy and this is why i really really yeah. like you know trustworthy youtubers and streamers who will give you honest opinions and this is what i strive to do in, in my 100%. youtube videos and streams because if i say to you hey i really enjoyed this part of a game or i really didn't you know that i did or i didn't you know you know know that it's it's true whereas a lot of a lot of reviewers a lot of influencers get sort of you know swayed by money or free copies of games the, and shit the most is the most important part to me is that you can make an argument that has a point if you turn around and yeah. go it's shit and you go why because i said so because i said so yeah yeah, yeah. i just didn't like it yeah i didn't like it and it's like well right. no good input 
Yeah. You, you have no objective reason to dislike it. You're just being a bit of a twat. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, you know, I am a big fan of the objectivity and being objective means that you give an honest opinion and you try and be as fair as possible, you know, and that, that's what I really dig. And I, I don't know, I, I feel like we need a little bit more of that in the games industry. And uh, that's why I look at YouTube rather than, no offense, places like IGN and Kotaku, because they always seem to be biased yeah. to me. And I prefer... I prefer, you know, YouTubers that I can trust. But that's just the way why, that I do it. Why I like streams. I like being able to walk into a stream and go, so what do you think? And someone can go, well, I've been playing it for about three hours now and I probably wouldn't pick it up again. And it's yeah. like, I can watch you playing it. I can it's see very, very difficult how to you're fake. playing it yeah. if you're enjoying it's it. It's very difficult to fake it on Twitch or on stream. It's so Unless, difficult. I mean, I've seen I mean, it happen. I've seen people fake games where they're like, but, they're like this. And you're like, are you enjoying it? They're like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I love it. Yeah. It's like your average streamer when they get scared and they knock their chair over and they're crawling on the floor and it's oh, like... Oh, God. Yeah, the fake, the fake scares. Well, that's why a lot of people started using heart rate monitors because you can't fake that. Well, I guess you yeah. can fake that shit, but... That's what... Yeah. Maybe if you've got, like, pedals under your... Uh, under your uh, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Guys, I'm quickly. really scared right now! Getting red in the face. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> Uh, but no, guys, I think we should start wrapping up. It's uh, coming up to the end of the show. As much as this conversation is one that I could talk about for the rest of time. It's so much fun. It's, oh, I, look, get me talking about the industry and their bullshit and I could, uh, I would literally chew your ear off. But guys, where can we find you and what have you got coming up on your channels this week? Elliot, kick us off. Uh, you can find me at Blindside UK uh, over on Twitch. I am at Blindside underscore UK on Twitter and Blindside underscore UK on Instagram. I'm trying to post more on Instagram. It's mostly just uh, most Sundays I uh, <laughs> I go off away and walk around uh, National Trust places. So there's a lot of posts of big old buildings. So coming up week, I'll be playing Sekiro. Um, Sekiro. I Wednesday. will be tuning in for that. Mm. Wednesday, I'm going to be doing uh, a bit of like a free for all. I'm going to, I think I've got a few like point and click adventures and smaller games. Uh, like I've got little nightmares I want to do and stuff like that. I love so I think, that game. Love so it. I think Wednesday, Brilliant. I'm going to start doing like little games that I can just kind of have a bit of like a one shot. Bank Honestly, rig. some of my favorite streams have been those little games. I love them. Yeah, they're great. Um, have you I'm, have you played Sekiro before? I have not played. Sekiro. Uh, I am going to be there because I love watching people <laughs> play that game for the first time. So I, I did a run through of Bloodborne, which I literally have just finished because yeah. uh, we we spoke about like difficult games, and someone basically in Discord was just like, "Have you played them through? Just go and play Bloodborne, play it from start to finish, see what you think." And I loved it. I uh, so, I rage quit that game so hard, I sold it the very next day. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about this. I, how many weeks have I been doing it now? Like four, four weeks. Ago? Yeah, it was since we started the podcast, essentially. So. Born, so yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, like I died more to just like trash and an exploration than I did to bosses. Yeah, but I I loved it. I really enjoyed like the like learning the systems, trying to learn the bosses. Like the game looks great, even though it's all grey. So uh, yeah, Sekiro starts this week, and I'm just gonna try and get through it a session a week rather than because Bloodborne first week I did I did. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah, you went hard on that game. Uh, yeah, man. exactly. That is the correct response to that statement. It hurt my like, soul. That is like, you, do, do you enjoy stress? Is stress all <laughs> your thing? To be fair, because it was the start of the game and it was like a lot of the learning curves, I think I got a lot of the techniques down quite well. And then the yeah. rest of it, it went down to like once or twice a week where I was just like, cool, I'm just going to like take it a bit easier. Um, but yeah, like I really enjoyed it. So yeah. So yeah. Sekiro on Monday, Wednesday is going to be some one shot and Friday I'm going to be back on Doom. Because I'm finish it Friday. I'm a, I'm a finished Doom, and then we'll find a new game. So cracking. What about uh, what about you, Taylor? What have you got coming up? Are you doing any streams this week? Uh, I'll probably do one or two Dead by Daylight streams. I'm headed to the Netherlands for two weeks. Yeah. So I'm really excited. Um, but I'm gonna be away for a lot. Obviously, traveling. Yeah. But, we're going to um, be doing a we're going to be doing a pre-recorded, aren't we? We're going to do a podcast uh, in yeah, a few we'll days, I think. Yeah, so we can get a we can get one up while you're away. But sorry, carry on. That's okay. That that's about it. I've been playing a lot more like um PC, sorry not PC, PS4 couch games, co-op yeah. games. Um, so I'm kind of look like looking in the market for that. I'm finding a really hard time just finding them. Yeah. Like, like I don't make them anymore. Like I I am obsessed with Overcooked. Like I love Jackbox. I'm playing Unraveled right now. And um, I just like love the puzzle and like two player game. That's why like Elliot are gonna and I have plans to play Portal two together. You're gonna stream that one. You're gonna stream the Portal. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that it. that's what we'll be doing when I get back for sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, just to add another game to your library, uh, one that is both amnesia like and uh, couch co op. Well, couch play. It's called um, The Plague Innocence. 
and that comes okay. out in five days and is that the play... one about the rats yeah, it is you play a brother and sister yeah, who's trying to get across medieval france uh, in the time of the hundred year war slash black plague and you have yeah, to it looks use really interesting physics puzzles to get through it while uh avoiding murderous guards and being by a like well, huge swarms totally of rats by the way like, like i think there's like 400 plus yeah. rats on screen at once like they are wow. just yeah. cool okay i wrote it down i'll definitely play that <laughs> <laughs> i would love to watch you play that i mean um i've said before like i, I would love to you to do some because you as you said earlier you really love board games i would love to see some board game content from you Table i think that would be awesome so, Hell yeah I, yeah i I'm working on my first board game YouTube video. Are you working on one? I didn't know this. Yeah, I started. I started Confirmed. filming it yesterday. Um, nice. My uh, partner is a uh, video editor, so she'll be putting it together for me. Nice. And uh, I started filming it yesterday, so I'm gonna try. But I mean, we'll see if it turns out, and then I'll post it. Look, I will <laughs> tell you what I've told everybody about YouTube. It's super difficult at the beginning, and then it gets easier as you do it. It's really hard. It really it's is. People, effect. yeah, it's not easy. It's not as easy. It's not. I'm gonna say Twitch is easy, but it's not. You think it's well, gonna be easy because you're a streamer? It's not. Like I it's think hard. I want to have like a few videos up before I tell anyone. Like I. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I love board games. Like that. That's like my true hobby. Like I love board games and. Yeah. Um, now like moving over to pc games like obviously like you still get the same sort of enjoyment like the stories like the mechanics out of out of games and like i just i i really enjoyed like playing all of them so all i'm saying is is one day if we have the money ggwp live we could do board <laughs> games i'm just saying oh, yeah. i'm just well, saying like, I've, been so thinking, I've been thinking about doing like board game like streams Why but not? i don't know how i would like mic everybody and like have the camera we'll have like, a we'll like have a like we'll have a talk you know? yeah like, it is it is but it's not that difficult we'll have a talk about that after after we wrap up the podcast because it's it's doable it's easily doable i mean um, i also have to find victims to come online with me, so. <laughs> victims <laughs> i love I, it i did uh, a board game screen using uh tabletop simulator we played uh yeah what was it called unstable unicorns yeah, yeah there's, you there's, played that it's, it's i don't good. play that one Fast yeah tabletop simulator's got a lot of games in it but where could people find you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once you buy the base game, you get pretty much yeah. all of the games for free. But where can people find you, Taylor? If they want to come and check you out, where are you? Uh, I'm on twitch.tv slash atarkic. And I also have an Instagram page, um, atarkic.tv. And I also run the podcast uh, Instagram page, which is GG Weekend Podcast. So come check us out there, too. Perfect. Twisty, where can people find you and more of you coming up on your channels this week? Uh, so I've got a late night stream coming up on Sunday, which is going to be a collection of indie games or maybe nice. to see if there's content that I'm so hyped to check out. Um, on Monday, we're back with Days Gone. That's Monday, Wednesday, and uh, Friday, a late night. Uh, so they can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Twisty Shape or um, making noise over on Twitter at Twisty Shape. You have a YouTube as well, don't you? I do. Um, I've got an Instagram, which is at Twitty Shape uh, as well. <laughs> um, and I have a YouTube, but uh, it is all just letters and everything. Still waiting to hit that 100 subscribers mark. Yeah. Or else. Yeah. But just when it's, just uh, search Twisty Shape. Well, when I, I get it. it uh, yeah. When, when, once I get that URL, I'm pretty certain. Yeah. Again, just put it in search Twisty Shape. If you really want to, yeah. you'll find it. No problem. You Google me. I'm there. Yep, there you go. Um, but look, guys, of course, I am the Grubby Brit. If you found this podcast, you have found my YouTube channel. So I also have my Lorelei playthrough on uh, on my YouTube channel. That was, I have my Lorelei playthrough on the channel. Go and find it. Um, <laughs> Jedi Mind Tricks. But no, I, uh, my Lorelei playthrough will, the next episode I will be uploading on monday well one today one on friday which was yesterday i'm so sorry Elliot. and then one on monday so the last part will be posted oh, he's muted he's, he's so angry he's muted i'm not muted uh, i'm just oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah that's coming up on my channel as well and uh, i stream over on twitch.tv as well twitch.tv forward slash the grumpy brit i do sundays tuesdays and thursdays so we do scary game thursdays and at the moment i don't really know what i'm doing on sundays and tuesdays it's kind of all a bit up in the air um <laughs> well, by daylight and you were doing like starter streams for a bit yeah i'm kind of struggling to like i don't know like i'm definitely a variety streamer and i'm trying i'm struggling i used to do set days for set games and i'm kind of struggling at the moment to have like a a routine with it so you it's kind of weird play all of them i do i want to play too much <laughs> i've even thought about doing a couple more youtube live streams because i really enjoyed doing my uh my youtube live stream of days gone it was the my first impressions of days gone and it was just it, i don't know it was just really 
it's a really chill live stream. Like I, I don't know if it was because yeah, I was newer or whatever, but like it's just you should it was be just a super professional chill. Mord Howl player. Oh, I've been loving Mord Howl. Be it's so good, dude. It's, Holy shit. Oh, Mord Howl. Like yeah, I well, I wanted to do I wanted to do a YouTube video on Mord Howl because I don't think I don't know if everyone's talking about it or not, but it's it's not bad. It's a decent game, but it's got a lot of work that needs doing on it. Um but guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there because we have we're gonna overrun. But thank you so much for watching. If you have made it all the way through to the end, because I know some of you do, thank you so much for watching this podcast. And if you are enjoying it, as always, leave a like comment, share, tell me if you liked it, tell me if you hated it, whatever, that's fine. But for guys, I will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.